Hello friends. Welcome to the Anime Reality Bender. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto awakened the power of the frozen dragon Korotatsu. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Name. Naruto Uzumaki Age. 8 Gender. Male Eye Color. Bright Blue. Hair color. Sun-kissed blonde distinct features, whiskers and orange jumpsuit. Medical history. Every bone in the boys has been broken or fractured at least seven times, several bones healing incorrectly at some point. Has had multiple concussions in the past. Injuries. Burned skin, broken arm and leg, multiple lacerations around his body, and a concussion. Cause of injuries. Hit in the head with the butt of a kanai then dragged across the broken glass from a nearby broken window outside, where they hung him by his arms, beating the boy, before lighting it ablaze. Days until recovery. Three weeks here is inside, putting the medical report down. Damn those villagers. He whispered. He started to rub his head, sighing once again. The only reason he didn't die was simply that of the very reason they were harming him. Damn. Inu. The wizened Hokage spoke in a commanding voice to seemingly nobody. A swirl of leaves followed by the crouched form of a dog masked figure was the only sign of movement. Yes, Hokage same. The figure spoke in a bored tone. Hiruzen's eyes hardened. Naruto has been attacked. Again. The Hokage spoke, I'm assigning an A-rank mission to you. Make sure Naruto doesn't get attacked again. The Anbu nodded before vanishing. Mindscape Naruto's eyes shot open before he groaned and stood up, glancing at his surroundings. Large pipes traveled along the ceiling, glowing with an ominous red coloring. Smaller pipes lines next to the red pipes, glowing a comforting blue color. Water was at the boy's feet but didn't seem to get him wet. A soft, feminine voice spoke out. Come closer, the voice spoke. Naruto, as if in a trance, started to walk down the long corridor of the sewer. The voice was beckoning him closer to every second. Soon, the boy was racing down the hallway, before stopping before a giant gate. Come closer. Child, the voice spoke out again. Naruto cautiously approached the gate. Two red eyes peered at him. W who are you? Naruto spoke, slightly nervous. A figure started to take shape the closer he got. He was almost to the gate before the figure moved. It approached the gate, the bars being the only thing separating them. Why, little child, I am here to help you. The figure walked into the light, illuminating her. She was around five feet eight, with scarlet hair. Nine tails swung behind her lazily. She licked her red lips, like a predator who found their prey. Her red dress shone in the dim lighting, revealing her curvaceous figure, which swayed, if only slightly. Her blood red eyes peered directly into Naruto's eyes. How are you going to help me? Naruto spoke, slightly calmer. The woman grinned, her white teeth glinting dangerously. By killing you, she spoke, her voice turning slightly demonic. Naruto jumped back, terrified. He started to shake in fear. Laughter rang out, confusing Naruto. I'm kidding, Kit. I wouldn't kill you. You're too important for me to do that. Who are you? He yelled, feeling angry at being tricked. The lady grinned, though this one was a bit more subdued. I'm the reason you're hated. I'm the one that caused those villagers to hurt you. I am the Kayubi no Kitsune. Though I prefer to be called Kurama. Kurama smiled at Naruto. But that's impossible. The fourth Hokage killed you, besides, you're not a giant scary fox. Naruto yelled accusingly, pointing his finger at the woman. The girl grinned, before slapping the gate with her tails, then pointing at the ears on her head. Would you prefer my other form? I think this one is cozy, she grinned mischievously, before a red energy swirled around her, revealing a giant fox, who roared down at the poor boy. Wait! Turn back, turn back! Naruto shouted frantically quickly followed by laughing of the Kayubi. Naruto glared at the girl. Will you stop that? He shouted. The girl tilted her head innocently. Well, I am a fox, can't I prank the supposed king of pranks a little? She smiled cheekily. The blonde glared at the fox girl, before laughing lightly to himself. I guess you got me, and you convinced me. How are you here? I thought the fourth Hokage killed you, Naruto said curiously. Kurama smiled before gesturing Naruto to sit down. Defeated and killed is completely different, Kit. A mere human couldn't defeat something that is immortal, so he had to seal it. A. 
Normal object wouldn't work either, so he had to seal it in a living being. That being was you, Naruto. We are currently inside your mindscape, a place that your mind and the seal created so we could talk. Kurama explained. Naruto looked shocked. His own role model condemned him to this? To the hatred of the village? He was so wrapped up in his thoughts, he didn't even feel that hand that landed on his shoulder. A soothing voice, however, snapped him out of his poisoned thoughts. Naruto, the fourth had to do it. Imagine being put in the position he was in, being forced to sacrifice himself, or the village. So, he sealed me. So, here I am. I promise I won't hurt you, nor will I try and trick you. I will protect you, Kit, she spoke, calming the boy. Naruto sniffed, then nodded. He glanced up to see that Kurama was reaching through the bars. He ran forward and embraced the foxy lady, crying a bit. Kurama made shushing sounds, calming him. Soon, Naruto fell asleep in her arms, tear staining his cheeks. Kurama smiled. Good night, Kit, she whispered, before laying him down and retreating back into her prison. Ramen and cool stuff. Blinding lights were the first thing Naruto saw when he blearily opened his eyes. Next, was the intoxicating smell of tobacco, wafting around the room. He turned his head to see the third Hokage, smoking his pipe. His worried look told everything Naruto needed to know. How are you, my boy? The man's tired voice asked. His age never seemed more pronounced than it did now. I'm fine. How long was it this time? Naruto asked, referring to how long he was unconscious. Two weeks and a half. I'm sorry, Naruto. This is probably one of the worst attacks you've experienced so far. I have assigned you a protector. Inu. Suddenly, a masked man appeared next to the Hokage. Naruto, this is Inu, he is one of my most trusted Anbu, he shall protect you from now on. If you ever need anything, just call and he will appear. Hiruzen spoke, followed by the nod of the man next to him. Naruto nodded, sniffing the man a bit. The man smelled like dogs. Fitting. Naruto sighed. Remembering his dream, he decided to confront the man about it. Just to make sure it was actually a dream, which he hoped wasn't true, he liked Kurama. Hokage Gigi, I had a dream last night, is it true I am the container for the Kayubi no Kitsune? He asked, studying the man's face. Shock, anger, then finally, resigned acceptance, he nodded. I'm afraid you are, my boy, he spoke, rubbing his aching head, what did it say? He asked, wearily. She. The Kayubi is a she. She can be trusted. This I know. Naruto said firmly, leaving no room for argument. Hiruzen looked like he was about to argue, before seeing the look in Naruto's eyes, he nodded. I'll trust you won this, but now you know about your tenet, if you tell someone about it, please inform them that it is an S-ranked secret, punishable by death, Hiruzen informed him. Naruto nodded. The aged Hokage rose to his feet. I have to go, paperwork needs to be done, he spoke suddenly looking like he was about to collapse. He walked away, mumbling about stupid paperwork, and how it never disappears. Naruto grinned at the Hokage's back, before deciding it was time for his favorite thing in the world. Ramen. He shot up and bolted toward the door, before realizing he was still in his hospital gown. After changing, he started towards Ichiraku Ramen. Naruto, a voice spoke out, he suddenly turned, what? Who are you? He asked out, getting weird looks from the nearby strangers. Shush, speak in your mind, it's Kurama. Kurama smiled inside her cage. Kurama, how are you speaking to me? Naruto asked, going back to walking to Ichiraku's. When you got attacked, the seal weakened because of your strained emotions, so I used that damage to create a mental link with you. I can now speak to you, and experience what you see. Hear, taste, smell, or feel. Kurama explained. Naruto nodded. A thick aroma filled Naruto's nose. He grinned. Ramen. Old man. Did you miss me? Naruto yelled, ducking into the small ramen shop. Tuchi grinned back. Naruto. Glad to have our favorite customer, he laughed. The. Usual. Naruto nodded. All right, Ayame. Five miso ramen for our favorite customer, he yelled back. Naruto's back. A voice yelled, followed by a crash and a clang. Soon. A young woman appeared next to Naruto, hugging the daylights out of him. Ayame. Naruto whined. Said girl laughed. Poor Naruto, I'll fix you up some ramen real quick. She cooed, rushing back behind the counter. Soon, a delicious bowl of ramen was in front of Naruto. Then another. Then another. And another. 
After Naruto's five bowls of miso, he thanked Tuchi and Ayame, paid, and wandered home. Naruto, I need to tell you something. Come inside the mindscape when you can. Kurama spoke through the mental link. Naruto nodded. Once he got inside, he closed his eyes, trying to enter the mindscape. Nothing happened. Um, Kurama. How'd I enter the mindscape? Naruto rubbed his head sheepishly. Just focus on your inner self with your eyes closed, Kurama said. Naruto nodded. He sat in the lotus position and closed his eyes. His breathing calmed. His body became still. He started to focus on the inside of his body, slowly, he was enveloped in darkness. Mindscape Naruto opened his eyes, revealing that he was standing in front of Kurama. What did you need to tell me? Naruto asked, tilting his head slightly. Kurama smiled slightly, before coming seriously. It's about your training, along with a couple of other things. First, I am going to tell you the location of something very powerful, a devil fruit. What's a devil fruit? Naruto asked, looking confused. Kurama smiled. A devil fruit is a fruit that can give you powers. They are extremely rare, but because they have demons inside them, I can sense when one is nearby. And, judging by the power of the demon, it is probably a logia. Logias transform your body into an element and allow your body to be intangible. Kurama explained. Naruto nodded in understanding. That sounds cool. Where is it? Naruto asked, stars in his eyes. Kurama giggled. It is currently in a very dangerous place. The place that you humans call Training Ground 44. Also known as, the Forest of Death, a place that you won't be able to reach until I gift you with my second thing. A summoning contract. A summoning contract? Naruto asked, once again confused. Kurama sighed, she needs to educate him. A summoning contract is a contract to a certain animal that allows you to summon them. They will assist you in combat, and if you're skilled enough, will teach you their special form of sage mode. Naruto nodded, hearing about sage mode when he overheard. Hokage Gigi talking to a weird old man. So, what animal is the summoning contract for? Naruto asked. Foxes, Kurama said, followed by a poof of smoke revealing a giant scroll. Naruto opened up the scroll, only to see it's blank. Why is it blank? Naruto asked, looking up to Kurama. Because you are the first human to sign it. Speaking of which, it needs to be done in blood. Sign your name, then put a fingerprint of each finger on the hand you'll be summoning with. Both if you want. Kurama explained, once again cursing his lack of education about these things. Naruto nodded before he swiped his thumb against one of his sharper than average canines. He started to write his name with his bloody's digit, before putting his fingerprints on the scroll. Once he was done it instantly rolled up and disappeared with a poof. Okay, it's done. Here, let me show you the hand signs of the jutsu, Kurama said, before doing just that. After memorizing the seals, Naruto nodded. Anything else you need to tell me? He asked, hoping it was something else cool, Kurama grinned. You're gonna have fox features, she shouted gleefully, what? The frozen foodstuffs, what? Naruto yelled, Kurama giggled. You heard me correct, Naruto-kun, you'll have fox features, like a tail and some ears. I think you'll look cute, Kurama grinned cheekily. Naruto huffed. You do realize that if I suddenly sprout a tail, the villagers will hate me even more right? Naruto asked, slightly annoyed. Kurama smiled sadly and nodded. That is why I am going to teach you a special technique. It is called demonic illusion. Demon transformation jutsu, Kurama said, it will create an illusion around your body that fools all five senses. If someone were to try and touch your tail, they would think that nothing was there. They wouldn't be able to see, small, or hear the swish of your tails. Of course, it would take plenty of concentration the first couple of times, before it becomes instinct. So, here are the hand seals, and I expect you to practice it. Kurama showed him the hand seals before nodding. It was time for Naruto to get the fruit. All right Kurama, I think I got the hand seals down, Naruto said, doing the hand signs. Kurama nodded. Naruto, tomorrow I want you to gather as many kanai as you have, and make your way to training ground 44. I will guide you to the fruit. Before you enter the training grounds, put as much chakra as you can into the summoning jutsu, but I want you to make sure you can. Still move afterwards. Understood. Naruto nodded. Good. Kurama got up from where she was previously sitting and yawned. Tired? Naruto asked, grinning slightly. Kurama looked at him and nodded. You should be too. It's almost 9 o'clock at night. Get some sleep. K. 
Kit, Kurama said lazily. Naruto nodded before his form drifted away as he entered the world of dreams. The next morning, you could see Naruto putting on some of the only cloths that were suitable for a shinobi. He was wearing Enbu Style's black pants, with a slightly burnt orange around the side. On his chest, one could see Enbu Styled mesh over a black shirt. He also had a black mask going up to his nose, not unlike a certain lazy pervert. Naruto yawned, annoyed that Kurama woke up at 6 am, he sighed. Stupid vixens, making me wake up so early, Naruto thought to himself grumbling before jumping slightly at an annoyed tone in his head. I can hear your thoughts you know, Kurama said, slightly peeved at being called stupid. She was 9000 years old for heaven's sake. Naruto grinned. I know, he said cheekily back to her, Kurama grumbled. Just hurry up to the training grounds, she pouted. Naruto nodded and started out towards when Kurama was informing him the devil's sense was closest. Soon, he arrived at a giant gate marked, training grounds 44 feet before he nodded to himself. Go to the eastern gate, that is the closest to the aura. Kurama said, feeling the devil inside the fruit. Naruto started running before he arrived at the gate. Using a chakra enhanced leap, he cleared the top, barely. Naruto sighed in relief before continuing to follow Kurama's directions. Naruto soon stumbled upon a tree that was taller than all the others. Luckily, he didn't encounter any giant animals, as he forgot to summon the fox. Is the devil fruit up there? He thought to Kurama, who shook her head, though he couldn't see it. I think it's underneath it. Try to find an entrance or something. Kurama replied. Naruto nodded, frowning slightly. Underneath, he started to circle the tree, looking for the entrance like he was told. On the other side of the tree he was standing at originally, there were a small divide in the trunk of the tree, followed by an ominous aura. He slipped between the crack, and immediately felt a freezing draft if wind blow over him. With breath visible, he started to move down the steps inside the long tree. The farther down he went, the colder the air around him seemed to get. Just as Naruto was rethinking coming down here, a large cavern suddenly opened up in front of him. The room was large, the ceiling was easily 15 feet off the ground. A small glaze of ice layered the inside of the cave, making it slick. In the center of the room sat a blue fruit, frosted over by the cold temperatures. That's it Naruto. Go, eat the damn thing, it's cold in here. I wish I could stop feeling what you feel for just one second, Kurama said, shivering slightly. Naruto grinned, and ran forward, grabbing the fruit. He put it in his pocket and walked out of the cave. Once he got back outside the cave, he pulled out the strange fruit and examined it further. The fruit was a light cyan color, with little swirls around it. It was cold to the touch, and the air around it was visible. Naruto opened up his mouth and bit. Freezing, it tasted like he just bit into a piece of frozen pear. Finished chewing, he immediately swallowed, before finishing up the consumption of the rest of the fruit. Naruto. Summon the fox. I sense someone coming, Kurama yelled. Naruto nodded and quickly going through the signs before slamming his hand against the ground. Summoning jutsu. Naruto yelled, followed by a puff of smoke. Once it cleared, it showed a small, white fox. Hello, I am assuming you are the new summoner, the fox spoke in a feminine voice, I am Yuki, I was told I was to be your personal summon once you meet the boss, is there anything you need me to do? There is something coming, I need you to help me drive them off. Bafo. Suddenly Naruto collapsed, ice forming around his entire body. The last thing Naruto saw before he passed out was two footsteps landing in front of him. Anko was having one of her normal strolls through her beloved forest. She sighed as a giant tiger tried to kill her. Key word, tried. Seconds before its giant paw swiped her, she disappeared from its view before she stabbed it with a potent poison kanai, which instantly knocked it out. She smiled. Looks like the tiger population is bouncing back from its war with the giant centipedes. That's why she didn't want to straight up kill the tiger, they were endangered, or at least as close to as endangered as a 20-foot tiger can be. Anko walked over to the giant beast before collection the kanai she used. Suddenly, Anko felt a chakra signature nearby, along with another one. A centipede. She glared, sensing that the other chakra signature was a small boy, who just used a jutsu. She started to rush as quick as she could to where she sensed them. When Anko arrived, she saw that the giant 12 feet long centipede was slowly approaching a small boy, around the age of 7 or 8. The boy seemed to have sensed the centipede too, as he started forming hand seals. He quickly slammed his hand against the ground and called out. Summoning Jutsu. He shouted, 
Shocking Anko that a kid so young had a contract, he started speaking to his summon before faltering, along with Centipede moving in. Anko reacted instantly. Swinging two kanai towards the centipede, she instantly stabbed the brain before jumping towards the boy. Frozen. The boy was frozen solid, and his summon, a fox it seemed, was growling at her. She sighed, motioning to the fox she meant no harm. She started to approach the boy before the fox spat out a miniature ice spike at her. Dodging the attack, she quickly threw a couple of senbon to disperse the small fox. Surprisingly, it stayed around after being hit. The fox reared her head back and barked. As a shockwave of sound beat her ears, the fox ran forward, only to stop with a kanai at her neck. Dispel before I make you. I mean no hard to the boy, let me help him, Enko said, her eyes cold. Nodding, the fox stepped back. I will stop attacking you, but I will not dispel until I know he is. All right. She spoke, causing Enko to nod. Walking over to the boy, she picked him up and used the body flicker technique to disappear with the boy quickly followed by the fox. She appeared in the hospital, only to realize most of the ice is gone. Shocked, she dropped the boy and called out. Quickly, a couple of doctors ran over, before glaring. Anko sighed, before she realized they weren't glaring at her. They seemed to be glaring at the boy. Call the brats team, one of the doctors spat out, glaring at the blonde boy. One of the nurses nodded and ran over and yelled for somebody. Slowly, a girl, an Inazuka it seemed, walked out. One look at the boy, her face became filled with shock. Naruto. She called, shocking Anko. This boy was Naruto. The only other person who was hated just as much as her? The dog girl ran over and immediately picked up Naruto, and ran to one of the rooms, leaving a shell shocked Anko behind. When Naruto awoke, he was blinded by lights. Hospital. Again. He sighed, before sitting up, but was stopped by a gentle hand landing on his chest. Easy Naruto. Are you okay? You got dropped off here by one of the T&I division workers, torture and interrogation. Naruto sighed before nodding. What happened? Oh, yeah, he was getting the devil fruit. I'm fine Rin, let me up, he said. Nodding, the girl, Rin, let Naruto get up, who started to stretch. Kit, are you okay? I was worried you were rejecting the fruit. Kurama spoke out in his mind. Nodding, Naruto got up and walked over to the dresser that was next to his hospital bed. Grabbing his clothes, he motioned Rin to leave, before he started to change back into them. I'm fine, Kurama, I think my body was just getting used to the whole, you know, becoming ice. Naruto spoke back, he felt Kurama nod her head. Try to see if you can make your body freeze something, like that plant over there, Kurama said, think about the plant he just walked by. Nodding, Naruto walked over to the plant and put his hand on it. He thought about freezing it, and suddenly, the leaf he was holding froze instantaneously. Naruto grinned. It worked. Naruto. Go see if you have a resistance to the cold. I suggest going back to that room in the forest. It should be easier now that you can't be hurt by things unless they use a fire technique, which I highly doubt you'll have to worry about. Kurama said to him. Naruto nodded, before he decided to try something. Imagining himself inside the cave, he imagined himself shatter and reform inside the cave. Opening his eyes, he saw that we was inside the cave again, he grinned. That. Is. Awesome, I can teleport. Naruto thought, grinning. Noticing that he didn't feel cold he looked around and grinned again. This power is awesome. Suddenly, he noticed a glint in the back of the room, behind where the fruit was. Frowning, he walked behind the pedestal that contained the fruit. It was a ninja too. The blade was a pale blue, with the etchings of a white dragon running along the blade. Like the fruit, the air around the blade was visible. He reached forward, and grabbed the hilt of the blade, only to black out. Again. Dragon, emos, and school, oh my. Boy, a voice called out. Naruto groaned, shifting his weight to sit up. Where, what, get up, brat, the voice called out again. Naruto groaned. He remembered. He was pulled unconscious. Again. Yay, who are you? He called out to the infinite darkness surrounding him. Suddenly. That darkness shifted into a frozen tundra like setting. A giant swoosh knocked the surrounding snow up, temporarily blocking his vision. Once the snow settled, what he say stunned him. In front of him was a giant beast, pure white scales, giant leathery wings spread out wide, piercing ice blue eyes staring directly into his eyes. A dragon, a real dragon. I am the frozen dragon, Koritatsu. I am the keeper of this sword, who is known as Mo Fubuki, Blizzard. 
Koritatsu said, I will give you a trial, test your worth to wield this blade, and my power. The trial begins now. Suddenly Koritatsu disappeared, and the air suddenly became extremely cold, even though Naruto couldn't feel it. The air kept dropping, faster and faster, until the very ground started to freeze rapidly. What is the trial? Nothing is happening, Naruto said, confused. Koritatsu seemed confused. Why is this human feeling anything? He decided to drop the temperature to 10 degrees Kelvin, just to test it. All the flora froze instantly, but still, the boy seemed fine. Boy, what are you? It is currently minus 1000 degrees and you don't seem to even feel it. Koritatsu said, annoyed. The boy blinked. Before grinning. Suddenly, his body froze. Koritatsu grinned in satisfaction, before the boy spoke. I'm an ice man. Naruto said, firing an ice spike out of his hand. Koritatsu's eyes widened. Well, I guess you pass, the dragon said, slightly off-put. The boy's body became normal and he nodded. Okay, how do I leave then? And how do I speak to you? He asked. Well, have you heard of a mindscape? Imagine leaving that. And as for how you can talk to me, I'll be setting up a mental link, which will let me talk to you telepathically. Ryutatsu said. Naruto nodded, before he faded away. Naruto got up, and yawned. He walked over to where he dropped the sword when he blacked out and picked it back up. He grinned. This was awesome. He got a sword and a dragon in one. Hey, brat, Koritatsu spoke in his mind. What, are you going to tell me something? Naruto thought back, walking out of the cave. He decided to try and teleport back to his house. Concentrating, he did the same thing he did earlier and opened his eyes. Nothing. Frowning, he tried again. Again, nothing. What the, he spoke softly. Kit, I think you can only teleport to places that have ice or extremely cold temperatures, Kurama said in his mind. Naruto nodded. Who is this? You have another person sharing a mental link. The hell, brat, Koritatsu said, confused. Oh yeah, this is Kurama, you know, the nine-tailed fox. Ever heard of her? Naruto thought back to him. Kura-chan, it's good to hear from you. It's been what, seven centuries? Koritatsu said. Naruto heard a giggle. It's been far too long Kori-kun. How have the hatchlings been? Kurama thought back. By now, Naruto was extremely confused. Wait, 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 you two know each other. Naruto thought. Kurama giggled again, along with a chuckle from Koritatsu. We've known each other for centuries. I was one of the first people she, befriended, when her father created her, Koritatsu said, grinning. Naruto felt Kurama nod. That's right, she piped up. Naruto sighed. Two giant beasts from legends, sharing a mind with him. He needed a way to block them out at some point. Anyways, Naruto decided to focus on where he froze that flower back at the hospital to teleport. Shattering, he suddenly appeared back in front of said plant, startling Rin as he did so. Naruto, where have you been? And where did you get that sword? She rapidly fired off questions. Naruto sighed. Just a new jutsu I've been working on Onisan. It will allow me to teleport to frozen items or a extremely cold place. But only if I've been there apparently. Naruto explained, not wanting to reveal the truth, as that might be a bit more complicated. Rin seemed to calm down before nodding. And the sword? She asked. Naruto grinned. A friend gave it to me. He said cheekily. Rin huffed, and walked away with a pout. Naruto grinned, before walking away. The academy started tomorrow, so he wanted to get some sleep. Naruto was getting dressed, deciding to put on his, ninja gear, as he dubbed it. It was the Anbu pants and mesh shirt he wore earlier. He yawned. Kit, I expect you to pay attention to the instructor. I refuse to have a container that doesn't even know how to throw a shuriken correctly. Kurama said sternly. Naruto nodded lazily, still tired from waking up. Kurama sighed. Lazy ass. She is right. Get your ass in gear, hatchling, Koritatsu said loudly, startling Naruto awake. He sighed, and started to walk to the academy. Maybe he should start making ice in certain places, so he can teleport instantly. Wait, no, the ice would melt. Could he make ice that can't melt? He shrugged, he will find out later. After walking for a bit, he finally arrived at the entrance to the academy. He sighed. Time to become educated. Yay. As he walked in, he started to observe the signs next to the classrooms. He was in class 802 if he remembered correctly. Ah, here it is. 
He peeked his head inside. Uruka sensei, am I in the right place? He said, his sword strapped to his back. The teacher nodded. He had brown hair, brown eyes, and a scar across his nose. When he saw Naruto, his face didn't change much, showing that either he doesn't let his hate interfere with his job, or he was still neutral about him. Hello, I'm assuming you're Naruto Uzumaki. My name is Aruka Yumino and I will be your teacher, Aruka said. Naruto nodded and sat down in the back of the class next to a black-haired kid whose hair was shaped like a duck's ass. Naruto smirked at this thought before settling down for class. An hour. That's how long it took for Naruto to hate the academy. It was so boring. He sighed. He wanted to leave so bad. But if he did, Kura-chan would get mad. He huffed and decided to pay attention to the lesson again. We are going outside now to test you on what you already know about Taijutsu, Ninjutsu, and Genjutsu. Then we will test your aim. Now let's go, Uruka sensei said. The class stood and walked. Outside, where Uruka started to call names. Naruto tuned himself out until she heard some names that interested him. Ino Yamanaka, Uruka said. A blonde girl walked out. She had pale blue eyes and seemed to walk with a bit of superiority. He sighed. The only thing he was interested in was her mind transfer jutsu, but that was it. Choji Akamichi, was next who got called out. He was a chubby kid with big cheeks and was munching on a bag of chips. He had brown hair that was spiked around him. Again, another one who was slightly more interesting than Ino, especially when he showed his partial expansion jutsu which inflated him. Shikamaru na Shikamaru stop sleeping. Uruka called out, annoyed. A black-haired pineapple walked forward and sighed. He seemed too lazy to do anything other than his shadow possession jutsu, so not much of an interest in Naruto. Kiba in Azuka. Kiba was a feral-looking boy with a dog on his head. Naruto grinned when he used his beast mimicry jutsu and thought about how he might be able to modify the technique to more of a fox once he got his features. Hanada Hayuga. Hanada was a quiet girl who has long straight lavender hair and iliac eyes. She eeped when she was called and walked forward quietly. By a Kugan, she timidly called out, the veins around her eyes becoming more pronounced. Shino Abarame. Shino was a stoic boy who walked forward and simply called out a bunch of bugs swarming around him. Sasuke Uchiha, Uruka called. The boy Naruto sat next to earlier walked forward confidently, and formed some hand signs, before a giant fireball incinerated one of the training dummies. Immediately, girls were calling out to him with hearts in their eyes. Naruto rolled his eyes. Show off. Naruto Uzumaki, Uruka finally made it to his name. Naruto walked forward and looked to the still-burning training dummy. He simply raised his hand toward it and shot out an icicle, before he shattered and reappeared next to the dummy and instantly froze it upon contact with it, putting out the flames. Good job everyone, especially you Sasuke and Naruto, Uruka called out. The taijutsu battles didn't really interest Naruto until he got called. Naruto and Sasuke please come up, Uruka called. As both Naruto and Sasuke walked forward, they gave each other a glance, before a nod of respect. Once they were across from each other, they formed a seal of confrontation, before they leapt forward and both instantly went for a left hook. Neither landed. Naruto sidestepped Sasuke's fist, and Sasuke ducked under Naruto's. Taking advantage of being lower than Naruto, Sasuke grabbed him and flung him behind him. Naruto, turning in the air, landed on his feet and slid. Naruto and Sasuke nodded at each other, before rushing in again. This time, Naruto managed a fist to the gut, while Sasuke managed a punch to the side of Naruto's head. Small amount of frost appeared where Naruto landed, while a small scorch mark appeared on Naruto's cheek. Jumping back, they both grabbed their respectable wounds, before Naruto rushed forward once again. This time, Sasuke stayed his ground, and waited. Naruto decided to slide, and then kicked upwards, knocking into Sasuke's chin, before he jumped up and tried to do a drop kick on Sasuke, who rolled out of the way. Sasuke then kicked Naruto in the side. Both sides got a bit more of an elemental wound. Enough. I declare this round a draw. Please return to where you were before. Uruka called out, deciding to intervene. Naruto and Sasuke nodded, before walked back to their seats. Naruto. Was it? Good match, Sasuke said nodding at Naruto. Naruto nodded back. You too, Sasuke, Naruto replied. He grinned slightly at Sasuke. Next, they tested Genjutsu, which Naruto didn't even get affected. 
It seems being made of ice acts like a mirror against Genjutsu, as the instructor got put in it instead. He grinned. Finally, they tested aim. Hiba tied with Shino, with a score of 7 tenths of Kanai and 8 tenths on Shuriken. Hanada got 7 tenths with Kanai and a 8 out of 10 with Shuriken. Ino got a 4 tenths and a 6 tenths. Shikamaru got a 6 tenths and a 7 tenths. Choji got a 5 tenths and a 3 tenths. Sasuke got a 8 tenths and a 9 tenths. Naruto got a 9 tenths and a 8 tenths. Uruka nodded. Okay, that's all for today, you may go back to your homes. He called out to the class. Slowly, everyone filtered out of the classroom. Sasuke walked over to Naruto. Hey, want to visit my place? I want to know what else you know. Sasuke said, walking next to Naruto. Sure, I am curious about you as well. Naruto nodded. Sasuke smirked and walked away calling back. Hurry up. Naruto sighed. How did he get wrapped into this again? He was currently sitting in the main Uchiha family house next to Sasuke, who was the son of the clan head. Across from him was Sasuke's older brother Itachi and his parents, Fugaku Uchiha and Makoto Uchiha. He bowed his head. Hello, I am Naruto Uzumaki, I have been invited into your home by your son, Sasuke Uchiha. I am honored to meet the clan head of such a prestigious clan. Naruto said, trying to think of all the manners that Rin tried to beat into his head. Fugaku nodded stiffly, before walking out the door, while Makoto gave Naruto a smile. It's good to meet you Naruto. You seem so much like your mother. She trailed off, shocking Naruto. You knew my mother, he shouted, leaning forward in shock. Makoto nodded and smiled. Your father too, though, I am afraid I can't tell you who he is. It's a secret, Makoto said, sighing. Naruto nodded. Then what about my mother? Can you tell me about her? Naruto said, leaning forward a bit more. Makoto nodded again. Your mother, Kashina Uzumaki was one the same genin team as me, along with my best friend. She had chrisman hair, and blue eyes, and was probably one of the scariest people I've ever met. You definitely inherited her personality Naruto-kun, as I heard you have quite the temper when someone makes fun of your whiskers. She was the same way, though it was more about her hair. You see, people to call her, Tomato Head, and she would get pissed. Her alias was, the Red Hot Headed Habanero because of how she would have a red or a when pissed. That, and she was a monster with a sword. Makoto smiled in nostalgia, before snapping out of it. Naruto was smiling fondly. She sounded like she was an amazing kunoichi. Man, I wish I could have met her. Naruto trailed off, a small frown on his face. Well, why not have Itachi show you around? He is off duty today, so you and Sasuke can hang out with him in the training grounds in the backyard. Makoto smiled sensing Naruto's dropping mood. Sasuke nodded, and walked out with his brother, followed by a slightly less enthusiastic Naruto. So, Naruto was it. Itachi said, quietly observing the small boy. Naruto nodded. Why don't you show me what you can do? He said, curious as to what made his little brother so intrigued by him. Naruto nodded. He walked over to a tree and spoke in a cool, powerful voice. Ice time, Naruto said and in less than a second, the entire tree was frozen solid. He grinned. Sasuke huffed, before he melted the ice with a fireball. Ice isn't much against fire, he said, smirking at Naruto, who smirked back. But if ice is cold enough, it could freeze fire, Naruto said, walking over to a small leaf. Absolute zero, he said, and instantly, the leaf was frozen, tried to melt it now Mr. High and Mighty, Naruto said, grinning. Sasuke smirked wider before sending a small fireball at the leaf. Once the fire was a couple of centimeters away from the leaf, it went out. What? Why did my fire go out? Sasuke said, confused. Naruto decided to elaborate. I was testing how cold I could get my ice, and I found I could do something usually impossible. I lowered that leaf's temperature to zero Kelvin. That means that I basically made something so cold, the very air around it doesn't move. It is almost frozen in time. Your fire went out because it cooled down in an instant, and the chakra froze. Sadly, I can only do it on small things like leaves and kanai. Naruto explained, shocking Itachi. A academy student could do something like that. That is so cold. How are you even able to do that? Sasuke said, also shocked. Naruto grinned. I have full manipulation over the cold, along with ice. 
I guess it could be considered a keke jenke, Naruto said, grinning. Sasuke smirked. I better get my flames hotter, so I can melt that ice. Sasuke challenged. And thus, the rivalry between the two boys began. Through all of this though, neither boy noticed Itachi disappear. Huh, where did Itachi go? Naruto asked. Sasuke shrugged. Hokage-sama, I must inform you of extremely important information. Itachi said, appearing in a crouch before Sarutobi. What is it Itachi-kun? The old man asked, sighing. This couldn't be good. It's about Naruto. My little brother befriended the boy. They were showing off in the backyard, and what Naruto revealed shocked me. He has complete and utter control over ice, though how trained he is in utilizing this ability I have no idea. Itachi said, still crouched. The Hokage dropped his pipe. What? When did this occur? Inu. The old man yelled. Inu suddenly appeared next to the Hokage. Yes sir. Inu asked, lazily reading a small orange book. Why didn't you inform me of Naruto's ice manipulation? Sarutobi demanded. Startled, Inu immediately put his book away. I'm afraid it slipped my mind to report it, I was busy making sure it had no ill effects on the boy. I might as well report everything to you. I'll start with something else you might want to take note of. Naruto has a contract with the Fox Clan. Inu said, again shocking the Hokage. He must have got it from the Kaiubi, Sarutobi sighed, rubbing his head in annoyance. Naruto is going to be the death of him. Someday. The boy started to reveal all of these abilities when he went to training ground 44, where he showed off his summoning when he sensed a giant centipede approaching. Luckily, Anko was there, so I didn't have to intervene. Moments after, Naruto's entire body froze, which I assume was because of something he found when he entered a nearby tree. I wasn't able to fit through the crack in the tree, and I didn't want to show where I was by making the hole larger. Anyways, after Naruto froze, and Anko had to prove to the white fox he summoned that she was a friend, Anko brought Naruto to the hospital, where he was completely fine, other than being unconscious. After waking up, Naruto walked over to a plant and froze it, with seemingly no effort at all. Then he shattered. I tried to find his chakra marking, but it was out of range. Luckily, a couple of minutes later, he reformed, but this time with a ninjutsu on his back. Then he ended his day and went home. Today, he went to the academy and showed off some impressive throwing skills, revealed that he is like a mirror to genjutsu, and also his ice jutsu. He is currently at the Uchiha's house. Inu finished his report. The Hokage sighed. Troublesome. Wait, what? What is he, Anara? I understand Inu, continue your job, after you explore that crack in the tree. I want to know what's in there. Understood. Serutobi said. Inu nodded, then disappeared. Would you like me to do anything, Hokage-sama? Itachi asked. The Hokage shook his head, and waved his hand in dismissal. Itachi vanished. What am I ever going to do with you Naruto? Sarutobi sighed for what seemed the millionth time that day. He was too old for this shit. Naruto and Sasuke were walking back to the Uchiha main house, talking about their abilities. So the Uchiha have an elemental affinity for fire. And you have this super awesome cheat eye. Naruto asked grinning. Sasuke sighed. Yes, we have an affinity for fire, and we have something called the Sharingan, a dojutsu that allows us to copy jutsu if it requires hand signs. It also has a couple other abilities like advanced vision and eyesight genjutsu affinity. What about you Naruto? What can you do? Sasuke asked. Naruto put a hand on his chin in thought. Well, I can manipulate ice, teleport to places with ice or extremely cold temperatures, though I have to have been there before. I also can reflect genjutsu, though I can't cast it for shit. I also can summon foxes, Naruto said, grinning over at Sasuke. He grumbled about stupid blondes. That's stupid, immune to genjutsu is stupid, Naruto is stupid, Sasuke mumbled. Naruto laughed. Says the one that will be able to copy any jutsu and send someone into a genjutsu through nothing but eye contact. Naruto said smirking. Sasuke grumbled even more. Stupid blondes. Exams. A. And so I am going to respond to a couple of questions every six chapters, I would have done once every five chapters, but it slipped my mind, so every six will have to do. Also, here are the results for the shipping so far. Naruto x Haku. 1 Naruto x Hanada. 0 Naruto x Fem. Kayubi. 1 Naruto x Anko. 0. Naruto x Haku x Hanada. 0 Naruto x Hanada x Fem. Kayubi. 
Zero Naruto X Hanada X Anko. Zero. Naruto X Haku X Fem. Kayubi. Zero Naruto X Haku X Anko. Zero. Naruto X Fem. Kayubi X Anko. Zero Naruto X All Four. Seven. Naruto X Haku X Hanada, my idea, too anyways, on to the Q&A. Question from Phoenix Gundam Kai. So is Naruto is gonna have nine tails or one? Or would he gain more as he progresses? Answer. After you ask that question, plenty of other people said that he should have multiple tails according to his chakra and ice powers. And I agree, so I will be having his tails increase as he mastered a tail worth of power, showing his progress. I will have it max out at nine tails. Question from Gamelover41592, nice job on this chapter but why did Naruto not tell them about the fruit? Answer. I am going to make it so Naruto is a bit smarter, but more like street smart, not academic smart. So, he realizes that having as many secrets as possible staying hidden is key to being a shinobi. I also have it so he is better at the more practical forms of being a shinobi, like taijutsu and ninjutsu, along with his aim. His chakra. Control still sucks, so that's why he is focusing mainly on his devil fruit right now, as that doesn't use chakra. So, not telling them about the fruit will prove to himself that he is capable of keeping secrets. That's all the questions I got so far, so if you have any more I'll answer them on chapter 12. Now, time for the fanfiction, which I apologize will be kind of boring. Tests. The next four years passed fairly quickly to Naruto. At the academy, both Sasuke and Naruto were tied for top of the class for almost the entire year, both being considered a prodigy. But, when it came to the written exams, Naruto struggled. Every single night he had to study, as he just refused to let Sasuke get ahead of him. Naruto also made some new friends. Shikamaru, Choji, Kiba, Hanada, and so some scale, Shino. Training-wise, Naruto progressed extremely far in his devil fruit. His absolute zero technique was now able to recover almost half an entire training dummy, but it takes too long to do, around 30 seconds. He also developed a couple more techniques, such as his Ice Age technique, along with his Ice Saber, Ice Time, Ice Clone and Ice Time Capsule all of which are extremely powerful techniques. For his actual Jutsu, he has the Substitution Jutsu, Transformation Jutsu, Demon Style, Demon Transformation. Jutsu, and recently, Demon Style, Demonic Intent which is basically a Genjutsu used from Demonic Chakra, that makes Naruto look like a demon, which combined from the enormous killing intent he inherited from Kurama, can freeze anyone high chunin or below. Sasuke became kind of depressed when it was revealed that the elders of his clan were plotting a coup d'etat, which his brother swiftly took care of. Luckily, it seemed that there were only the elders and a couple of older Uchihas who were in on the plan, so the Uchiha clan still prospered, and Sasuke bounced back from his depression, even more determined to prove that the Uchiha were still loyal to Konoha. Today, was the graduation exam. Naruto was excited for it too, as he was almost sure he could pass. He asked the Hokage earlier that day if it had to be the clone jutsu or if it could be a variation. Luckily for Naruto, it could be a variation. As he walked into the classroom, he spotted Sasuke sitting in the back of the room. He immediately sat down to his brother in all but blood inside. You ready for today? Naruto asked. Sasuke nodded, before smirking at Naruto. Are you ready? You won't chicken out will you? Sasuke asked, still smirking. Naruto smirked back. Of course not, duckus, Naruto said smirking. Immediately, Sasuke frowned, a tick mark appearing on his forehead. Whiskers coon, he whispered, smirking at the blushing look Naruto had on his face. W where did you hear that nickname? He exclaimed jumping up from his seat and pointing accusingly at Sasuke. He smirked. I may or overheard a conversation between a certain Hyuga heiress and a certain Whiskers coon, Sasuke said, a cocky smirk. Resting on his face, Naruto frowned. Asshole. Slowly, the rest of the class filed into the room, with Hinata sitting next to Naruto. All right, class, as you know, today is the graduation exam for you to be genin. The exam will be in six parts. Written, throwing, stealth, taijutsu, genjutsu, and finally ninjutsu. I will pass out the tests now. Uruk said, walking around passing out the tests. Once Naruto saw the questions he grinned. He was so glad to have Hanada. She made sure he studied, if he didn't he wouldn't know any of these. He immediately started to write down the answers. Fifteen minutes later, and he was done. 
He sat back in his seat and sighed. Okay class, it is time for the throwing exam. Uruka said, grabbing each of the papers. The class filed outside. In front of them were some training dummies with eight points marked. Kill points. This kind of reminds me of the first day here, huh Sasuke? Naruto said, nudging said boy. Sasuke nodded. Okay. Here is how the test will work. I will have the dummies moving, and if you hit one of the kill points, you will be award 5 points to your score, the maximum being 40 points for each of the kill spots. I will. Call out your name for your turn, Uruka said. It passed fairly quickly. Hiba scored 30 points. Hanada scored 40 points. Shino scored 35 points. Ino scored 30 points. Shikamaru scored 25 points, as he lazily threw his shuriken. Choji got 30 points. A girl named Sakura Haruno scored 35 points. Sasuke scored 40 points. Finally, it was Naruto's turn, who also scored 40 points. Uruka nodded. Good job everyone. It is time for the stealth test. This will be an obstacle course held inside the building. You will start with 40 points, which will be subtracted each time you trigger a trap, ring a bell, and every 10 seconds you're later than the time limit. Uruka said. He started calling names. Hiba scored a 31. Hanada scored a 39. Shino scored a 36. Ino scored a 35. Shikamaru scored a 37. Choji scored a 31. Sakura scored a 37. Sasuke scored a 39. And finally, Naruto scored a 40. Makes sense, since he was able to trick Anbu when he did his pranks. Alright, time for Taijutsu. I will call out your name, and you will spar against my assistant Mizuki. Like the last test, you will start with 40 points. You will lose points if you get hit, but you can regain points by getting hits, which could lead to extra credit. However, you won't lose points if you block. You pass if you either knock Mizuki out of the ring or last 3 minutes with a score higher than 20, Uruka explained. Everyone nodded. Hiba scored a 38. Hanada scored a 43. Shino scored a 40, as he just dodged the whole time. Ino scored a 28. Shikamaru scored a 37. Choji scored a 41, as he just hit Mizuki once with his massive power behind his punch. Sakura scored a 30. Sasuke scored a 45, and Naruto scored a 45 as well. Uruka smiled. You guys are doing great. Two more tests to go. This one will be Genjutsu, as I said. You will be given 5 seconds to detect and dispel a low-level Genjutsu. If you succeed in less than 5 seconds, you get the full 20 points. If you are able to dispel it and cast one on the proctor, you get plus 10 points. Every second longer you take outside the 5 seconds you will get a point deducted. Understood. Uruk asked. Everyone nodded once again. Hiba scored a 19. Hanada scored a 30. Shino scored a 20. Ino scored a 20. Shikamaru scored a 20. Choji scored a 18. Sakura scored a 30. Sasuke and Naruto both scored a 30 as well, as Naruto was a mirror to Genjutsu, and Sasuke was a natural with it as well. Good job. It is time for the Ninjutsu exam. You will be tested on the three academy jutsu, which will be 10 points each. If you use an advanced variation of a technique, you get 5 bonus points, and if you show one jutsu you know, another 5 points. Uruka explained the final exam. Once again, everyone nodded. Naruto yawned. Hiba, Shino, Ino, Shikamaru, Choji, and Sakura all got 35 points. Sasuke, Naruto, and Hinata all scored 40 points, as Sasuke used a fire clone, Hanada used a water clone, and Naruto used a ice clone, plus an extra jutsu. Uruka nodded. That concludes the exams, please head back to the class, I will be with you in a moment, once I calculate who passed. Uruka said. The class nodded, before going back to the classroom to wait. Once they arrived, everyone started to talk about whether or not they passed. Naruto. Sasuke, and Hanada all stayed in the back of the room though. They already knew they passed. Quiet, Uruka called, silencing the entire room. He nodded in satisfaction. Here is who passed. Team 1, Naruto tuned Uruka out until he heard his name. Team 7, Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke Uchiha, and Hanada Hayuga. The moment he said this, multiple females called out in outrage. Uruka grimaced before he shouted. Shut up. Anyways, Team 8, Kiba Inazuka, Shino Abarame, and Sakura Haruno. Team 9 is still in circulation from last year, so Team 10, Shikamaru Nara, 
Ino Yamanaka, and Choji Akamichi. That is all, you are dismissed. As you leave grab your Hitai 8, and wait in the classroom that your team number was for your team leader. Thank you, Uruka said. Slowly, everyone who passed filled out, each. Grabbing their headbands, Hanada, Sasuke, and Naruto all walked over to classroom 7. Three hours. Three hours they waited in that classroom. Hanada had her Byakugan activated a grilly, while Naruto was sleeping and Sasuke was pacing. Finally, the door slowly opened, and a silver-haired man peeked his head through. My first impression of you, is that you're interesting, he I smiled, meet me up on the roof. He vanished. Hanada poked Naruto to wake him up to fill him in. Naruto nodded, and together, they walked towards the door to the stairs. They arrived at the top to see the silver-haired man reading his book. He glanced up and smiled. Hello. My name is Ka. He was interrupted by Naruto jumping and shouting. Inu. It's good to see you. Naruto shouted happily. Kakashi sighed. Yes, Naruto. I am Inu, though it is supposed to be secret. Anyways, my name is Kakashi Hataki, and I will be your sensei. Kakashi I smiled. Naruto smiled. He was finally a ninja. Meeting Furball. And tests. Blah. First place. Naruto X All 412. Second place. Naruto X Haku X Hanada, my idea too. Tied for third place. Naruto X Haku, 1 and Naruto X Femme. Kayubi, 1. Naruto X All 4 will be the ship for this fanfiction, thank you for voting. If you have any questions please review. Also, I'm sorry to the guest that didn't want Sasuke to have a devil fruit. I am having a couple of people have devil fruits, so it won't just be Naruto, Sasuke and Haku. Another thing, it was brought to my attention that my chapters are fairly short, but I did this for a reason. Whenever I am reading a fanfiction, I hate to wait for the next chapter, as I would finish it in less than an hour, then I would have to wait a week for the next one. With me having short chapters, I can update daily, allowing you to keep following the story. I hope this satisfies you. So why don't you introduce yourselves? Kakashi said, I smiling. Why don't you start us off Kakashi Sensei? Hanada asked timidly. Kakashi nodded. My name is Kakashi Hataki. My likes are none of your business, neither are my dislikes. I have many hobbies, many of which aren't appropriate. My dream for the future, I never really thought about it. Kakashi said, still I smiling. The three face faulted. They learned nothing. All right, you, the shy one, why don't you start us off? Kakashi said. My name is Hanada Hayuga. My likes are cinnamon buns, flower pressing, and Naruto-kun. My dislikes are the caged bird seal and family being separated. My hobbies are flower pressing and training. My dream for the future is to unite the Hayuga clan under one. Family, Hanada said, finishing slightly louder, but still quiet. Kakashi nodded, before gesturing to Naruto. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. My likes are the Uchiha clan, Ramen, Hanada-chan, and Kura-chan. My dislikes are the three minutes it takes for ramen to cook, ignorant assholes who judge people before getting to know them, and people who are mean to my friends. My hobbies are training with my foxes, ice powers, and demonic chakra along with my own. My dream for the future is to become Hokage and unite everyone under a world of peace. Also, don't worry Inu-chan, I already told Sasuke and Hinata about Fuzzball. Naruto said. Who are you calling Fuzzball? Kurama shouted in his head, rewarding a grin from Naruto. Why, no one but you, my beautiful vixen Chan, Naruto said, winking in his mind. He could feel Kurama start blushing, followed by the laughing of a certain frozen dragon. Okay, you're turned up but, Kakashi Sensei said, earning a tick mark from Sasuke. My name is Sasuke Uchiha. My likes are Naruto, my brother Itachi, tomatoes, and training. My dislikes are the Uchiha elders, being forced to eat ramen with Naruto, and fangirls. My hobbies are training with Naruto, my devil fruit I acquired last year, and running from fangirls. My dream for the future is to prove to the village the Uchiha are still loyal. And don't call me duck butt. I get enough of that from Naruto, the Uchiha grumbled. Naruto laughed, Hanada giggled, and Kakashi hid a grin behind his mask. All right, tomorrow meet me at training ground 7 where I will be holding the real genin test. This test has a 66% failure rate, so good luck, Kakashi said, before vanishing. Silence. What? All three genin shouted in unison. Kakashi laughed lightly. 
That next morning, Team 7 was sitting around at the training ground they were told to arrive at for the test. At 7 o'clock, it is now 10 o'clock. A.M. Where the hell is our sensei? Naruto shouted, almost pulling his hair out. Sasuke twitched, agitated. Naruto-kun, please calm down, he must have an important reason for being late, Hanada tried to calm the frustrated boy. It seemed to work, as he sat down next to her, and pulled her closer. You're right Hanada him, Naruto said, nodding sagely. Hanada giggled, as Sasuke rolled his eyes. I don't understand how you are able to deal with him, especially when he is also in a relationship with a giant fox in his belly, Sasuke grumbled. Hanada stuck her tongue out at Sasuke. Well, Naru-kun, you should bring Hanada in here so we can be properly introduced, Kurama said, smirking. Naruto nodded his head, also smirking. Well, Sasuke, Hanada, why don't you come here and meet her? Naruto said, a smirk in play. What do you mean Naruto? Sasuke drawled out, slightly sweating. Hanada nodded in agreement. Naruto grinned, but said nothing, as he grabbing Hanada's hand and Sasuke's shoulder, before focusing on his mindscape. Slowly, he was enveloped in darkness. Kura-chan, we're here, and Koritatsu, materialize your ass into this mindscape now. Naruto shouted, revealing that his mindscape changed quite a lot. Instead of its previous sewer looks, it now was like a giant winter wonderland with a castle in the center. The castle in the center was actually what the new cage was, and the throne room was where Kurama was. Koritatsu liked to materialize himself into the mindscape to fly around a bit more, along with talking to Kurama. Right now, Naruto, along with Sasuke and Hinata, were sitting in the throne room in front of Kurama. A young man was to her left. He had white hair, blue eyes, and was in a white suit. He was eating a snow cone, and small dragon wings were on his back along with a tail. This was the humanoid version of Koritatsu. I'm already here, brat. Show respect to a dragon. Koritatsu boomed, trying to seem intimidating. Yeah yeah, whatever, Kori-kun, Naruto smirked. Koritatsu got a tick mark on his head. I told you not to call me that. He shouted, earning a smirk from Naruto. I blame Sasuke, Naruto said, earning a face foe from said boy. How is this my fault? Sasuke said, sighing. Naruto shrugged, gaining a giggle from Hanada. Anyways, Sasuke, Hanada. This is Koritatsu, the dragon who resides in my sword, and the beautiful woman sitting on that throne, lazy bum, is Kurama, then nine-tailed fox. Naruto said, earning a nod from the two. Immediately, Hanada rushed over to Kurama and started petting her tails, earning a small moan of surprise from the woman. Oh my gosh, they are so cute. Will Naruto get any? Will he? Will he? Hanada said, entering a fangirlish phase. Naruto blushed as Kurama started to moan about her tail being pet. Um, Hanada, please stop, Sasuke said, also blushing, shuffling a bit. Naruto grinned. No, keep going. I'm enjoying this, Naruto said, eating a bag of popcorn that appeared out of nowhere, getting a weird look from Sasuke. What? It's my mind, I do what I want with it. Naruto shouted. Sasuke sighed. Naru-kun. Hanada whined, walking back to where Naruto was standing, pouting, they were so fluffy, she mumbled. Naruto laughed. I know they are. Naruto grinned hugging Hanada. Kurama coughed. Looking over to Kurama, he grinned and rushed over for a hug as well, though he got more than what he bargained for. You see, Naruto is a bit shorter than Kurama, and Kurama also is a pervert, explaining the unnecessary amount of moaning. So, when Naruto went in for a hug, Kurama pushed his head down, right in between her fairly well-sized breasts. Naruto grinned pervertedly. Score. His muffled voice shouted, earning a smack upside the head from Hanada and a laugh from Kurama, and Sasuke, who was in the back, mumbled about, lucky blondes. Oh. Naruto. So bold. Kurama cued, forcing Naruto's head up, before kissing him lightly. Hanada huffed. A small amount of blood came from Naruto's nose, as he grinned pervertedly. Somewhere, a white-haired man felt a massive amount of pride for some reason. Naru-kun why don't you come over here? Hanada asked sweetly. Naruto, in a stupor, walked over to her, where Hanada gave him a massive kiss. Then she slapped him. Waha, Hanada, why did you slap me? Naruto asked. Hanada huffed. For being a pervert, she said, her arms cross. Naruto grinned. Only to you and Kura-chan. I promise my Hinaheim, Naruto cued, still grinning. 
Sasuke coughed. Um, Naruto, I'm still here, he said, feeling kinda awkward. Naruto looked at him and grinned. Ah, does Sasuke-chan want some attention as well? Naruto cued in a baby voice. Immediately, Sasuke got defensive. I'm not gay. I don't like guys. I don't want to ever date a guy. Sasuke shouted, before realizing what he did. Then, he looked like he was trying to pull a Hinata. Naruto laughed. Um, Naruto, what was that all about? Hinata asked, confused. Naruto grinned. Itachi and I decided we thought Sasuke was gay, so we started making gay jokes with him. He gets so flustered, and well, you see what happens, Naruto said, grinning. It was Sasuke's turn to huff. Annoying brothers. Naru-kun, it's time for you to go, your sensei is here, Kurama said, slightly disappointed. Naruto nodded before Team 7 started to fade from the mindscape. As Team 7 woke up, Naruto noticed a weight on his arm. Glancing over, he saw Hinata waking up, yawning. He smiled. Wake up. Jeez, were you that tired? Kakashi said, eyes smiling. Naruto glared half-heartedly. I was introducing them to Fuzzball, Naruto said. Damn it Naruto. Kurama shouted. Naruto grinned. Kakashi's eye widened before he calmed down, he nodded. Well, why don't I explain the rules of the test, shall I? Kakashi said, holding up two bells. These bells will be the determining factor of your fate. Your goal is to get these bells from me, and if you do, you will pass. Kakashi explained. But Kakashi sensei, there are only two bells, does that mean only two will pass? Hinata asked. Kakashi merely eyes smiled. You have until noon, starting now, Kakashi said, and immediately all three vanished. Moments later, they all regrouped farther away. This doesn't sound right, why would only two people pass? I have never heard of only two genin on a team. Sasuke started off. Naruto and Hinata nodded. Which means that there is another meaning, Naruto said, trailing off. It must be teamwork. He is deliberately trying to force us apart so we would have to look past our differences, Hinata said, figuring out the true meaning. All three of them nodded. We need a plan. Naruto, go for it, Sasuke said. Naruto nodded, grinning. Kakashi was just lounging under one of the many trees reading his book, when from his left, Naruto dashed forward, his sword in hand. Without even looking, Kakashi blocked his ninjutsu with a kanai, only for ice to start to creep up said Blade. Worried, Kakashi jumped back, only to realize his kanai is completely frozen solid. Hearing a shatter, Kakashi glanced back up to where Naruto used to be, only to feel a ninjutsu against his neck. Gotcha, Kakashi sensei, Naruto said grinning wildly only for Kakashi to disappear in a substitution. A couple yards away, Kakashi's eyes were widened. What the hell was that? I didn't even see him move, it must have been his teleportation jutsu, but how? I didn't see any ice, wait. The kanai. Clever basta. Kakashi was forced out of his thoughts by a giant fireball rushing his way. Thinking quickly, he jumped to the side, only to meet the pearl eyes of the Byakugan glaring at him. Dodging a couple of Jukan attacks, he jumped back once again. Only to find a wall of ice. What the hell are these kids? Feeling heat in front of him, he dodged another giant fireball by jumping straight up. Gotcha. Naruto thought, teleporting next to Kakashi, stealing the bells in the process, before teleporting back to his ice wall. Kakashi landed next to him and sighed. Good job, now Naruto, who will you give the other bell to? Kakashi said, eyes smiling. Naruto grinned and tossed the bells to his other two teammates. You only said we had to get a bell, not keep it, Naruto said, grinning. Kakashi's sweat dropped, clever bastard. Well then, I guess I have to say that Team 7, passes, Kakashi said eye smiling. Speaking of which, Naruto, how did you teleport to me while I was in the air? Kakashi said, genuinely curious. Naruto grinned. When you backed into my ice wall, I had some of the ice creep onto your back, kinda handy. Huh, Naruto said, scratching his head. Kakashi laughed. Okay, meet me here tomorrow at 8 a.m., we will start our D-ranked missions, Kakashi said, grinning. He means 11 a.m., Naruto said. Everyone but Kakashi laughed, who was pouting in the corner. Naruto used to think I was cool, damn you Itachi for corrupting my little Naru-chan, Kakashi mumbled, anime crying in the corner. Missions yay after Kakashi had his little session of depression, Team 7 decided to celebrate their success by eating at Ichiraku Ramen, 
suggested by Naruto, of course. Chatting animatedly, they casually walked through the streets of Konoha, laughing every now and then. Kakashi was trailing behind, still looking slight upset at the blatant disrespect Naruto showed. By the way, who came up with the strategy that beat me? Kakashi asked. Naruto raised his hand, grinning. Kakashi sighed, before nodding, made sense. I don't understand why everyone seems to think her unintelligent Naruto, you are fairly bright when it comes to making strategies, Sasuke said. Naruto shrugged. I have trouble with book smarts. I'm better with the whole practical arts of the shinobi. Book smarts is Sakura's strong suit not mine, Naruto said nonchalantly. Sasuke nodded. Hanada giggled. Yeah, you had to run to me whenever you were confused, kind of like a lost puppy. It was so cute. Hanada cued, giggling a bit more. Naruto face faulted. Traitor. Sasuke smirked, slapping Naruto on the back. Like a lost puppy? Sasuke said, earning a smack from Naruto. He pouted. Knock it off you two, we're here. Here is some money for the food, I need to report to the Hokage, Kakashi said, handing some Ryo to Sasuke, who he deemed the most responsible. Naruto grinned and ran into the small establishment, only to get attacked by Ayame again. Hanada smiled lightly and followed after, with Sasuke trailing after her. Ayame! Why must you do this to me? Naruto whined, earning a smirk from Ayame. Because it's funny, now, the usual, and what can I get you too? Earning a pout from Naruto, followed by a nod. I'll have some miso ramen, thank you, Hanada said quietly, smiling Ayame nodded. I'll have the seafood ramen, thank you, Sasuke said, earning a small frown from Hinata. I can't believe you like that stuff, Hinata said, grimacing slightly, Sasuke shrugged. I like crab, he said, earning a face of disgust from Hinata. She did not like crab. Naruto laughed, he loved his team already. Kakashi appeared in the Hokage's room, along with a couple of other janin. Of course, he was the last one to arrive, being late by a second. He eyes smiled. Kakashi, you're late. Like usual. Asuma drawled, taking a huff of his cigarette. Kakashi shrugged. Students kept me, he replied. A cough from the front of the room drew his attention, along with the rest of the janin. The Hokage stood there, eyes stern. Team 1, report, the janin nodded. Fail, he said. Hokage nodded. Kakashi decided to tune out all of the janin until he was called. Team 7, the Hokage asked. Kakashi I smiled. Pass, he said happily. Asuma dropped his cigarette. Guy started screaming about youth. Kurunai's eyes were wide with shock. The rest of the janin were quiet. The Hokage nodded. Team 8, he asked next. Pass, Team 9 is still in action, so Team 10, report. Pass, Asuma drawled, lighting another cigarette. The Hokage nodded. Dismissed, all of you. Kakashi, Please stay behind, Sarutobi said. All the janin vanished. The old man sighed and rubbed his head. Tell me, how did Naruto proform? He asked. Kakashi I smiled. Excellently, he actually managed to corner me, and if really wanted to, could have killed me. He has excellent control over his ice powers, along with some skill in strategy. I can see him becoming a leader in the future, as he demonstrated amazing teamwork. I was expecting Sasuke to butt head with the boy but they seem to be more like brothers than anything. I believe that this team will go far, Kakashi reported. Sarutobi smiled and nodded. All of the previous Team 7s do, though I hope you don't get the C-ranked mission curse the rest of Team 7 did. Kakashi nodded at this, he really didn't want a repeat of his team. Am I dismissed, Hokage-sama? Kakashi said, wanting to go to the Kia Memorial. The Hokage nodded, and instantly, Kakashi vanished. From view. Sarutobi sagged in his seat. Protect them Kakashi, they will go far, he whispered, before going back to his paperwork. He cursed. Damn paper. The couple of weeks went by fairly easy. Team 7 did D-ranked missions in the mornings, then did a team training in the afternoon. Currently, Team 7 could be seen walking to the mission office. Upon arriving, Naruto immediately pushed open the doors. He opened his mouth to say something, only to freeze, then he deadpanned. The Hokage was drowning. In paperwork, it was literally burying him. He sighed. Hokage Gigi, can't you use Cage Bunshin to do your paperwork? He sighed. Instantly, the Hokage appeared in front of him, bowing to Naruto. Thank you. You have revealed the way to beat my greatest enemy. 
he shouted, anime tears falling down his face. Naruto backed up, slightly creeped out. Um, can we have a mission? Kakashi asked. Like a flip of a switch, the Hokage was back at his desk, with clones of him working about doing paperwork. He coughed. Team 7, here is your first mission. It is AD ranked. Retrieve Tora. The Hokage said. Sasuke immediately donned a face of horror. No, why would you do this? Are you sending us on a suicide mission? Do you not care about our safety? Sasuke said, aghast. Sarutobi's face hardened. I am afraid you have to, I apologize. I promise your funeral will be grand, he said. Sasuke started crying anime tears, to the confusion of Hinata and Naruto. Um, Sasuke, what is the issue? We just have to retrieve a cat, Naruto asked, extremely confused. Sasuke frowned sadly. Tora, is not just a cat. She is the demon cat. Her only rival for the title is the Nibi no Neko, she is that terrifying. I heard stories of the horrors Itachi had to endure. They barely survived their first mission doing the retrivial mission. He said that it was as dangerous as an S-rank mission. He also said the only reason we won the last great war was because we threw Tora at the enemy armies. They were decimated, even for terrifying the when the fourth Hokage shredded the Iwa army. Now, every nation is afraid up us, simply because we train our genin with her. She. Is. Tora. Sasuke spun a tale so unrealistic, it had to be true. Naruto shuddered, while Hinata was hiding behind said boy. Both looked terrified. Well, let's go, shall we? Kakashi said cheerfully, I smiling. Naruto cried a bit. Duck butt, in position. I'm so gonna kill you, Naruto, Sasuke's voice sounded over the mouthpieces. Naruto grinned. Kitsune, in position. Love ya too duck butt, he said grinning from ear to ear, mirth dripping in his voice. Lavender in position. Knock it off boys, Hinata's voice sounded over the intercom. Kakashi nodded. Okay, engage in three, two, one, now. He said, instantly followed by the loud yowling of a cat. And the screaming of one of the boys. Damn cat, Naruto pouted. Hanada giggled, petting the purring cat. Sasuke shot it a glare. Upon arriving back at the mission office, they gave the cat to an old lady, who promptly started suffocating the cat in a hug. A hum, Team 7, I have a couple missions ready for you. First, you can go paint Mr. Fukiyoshi's fence, I twitch, take the Inazuka hounds for a walk. I twitch, followed by a yowling sound, or retrieving Tora, the Hokage said. No, I am done. Give us something else. We are not getting that cat again. I swear to anything that is holy if I have to get that cat. Again, Naruto said, his eyes flashing red for a second. The Hokage grinned, before looking at Kakashi. Well, are they ready? He said. Kakashi nodded. Well, I guess I can give you a C rank. Call him in, the Hokage said. Soon, an old man stumbled in, clearly drunk. Really, I have a couple of brats protecting me, he said. Naruto twitch again, but held himself in control. Team 7, this is Tazuna. He is a bridge builder who you must protect and escort to the land of wave, Serutobi said. The man took a swig of his sake and sneered. Nice to meet ya, brats, he said, stumbling a bit. Naruto sighed. Another nutcase. Welcoming party. Nice to meet ya. Brats, he said, stumbling a bit. Naruto sighed. Hello Tazuna, this is Team 7. They will be your escort to the land of waves. I assure you they are extremely capable, Hiruzen stated. Tazuna sneered. Them. Capable. They are what? 10. 11. They look like they aren't even able to stand still, especially the short one, Tazuna grunted. Naruto smirked until he realized that he was the short one. He felt anger start to bubble up, but controlled it. I assure you Tazuna, that we are extremely capable, Naruto glared, adding some killing intent into the mix. Tazuna gulped. Naruto, it isn't nice to scare the client, Kakashi said, I smiling. Naruto nodded, cutting off the killing intent. We will meet tomorrow at noon, and I won't be late this time, Kakashi said, vanishing in a swirl of leaves. Tazuna walked out. Then, Team 7 also disappeared, going to their respective homes to pack their bags. The next day, one could see Team 7 standing at the gates of Konoha. Naruto was pacing impatiently inside. He checked the time. 11.59, 12 o'clock. Instantly, Kakashi appeared, along with Tazuna. He I smiled at the astonished looks of his genin. Kakashi-sensei is on time, the world is over. 
Everyone pray, Naruto said, and instantly, Team 7 bowed their head, along with the gate guards, Azumo and Katetsu. Kakashi's sweat dropped. Tazuna looked confused. Well, let's go. I think we'll be there in about two or three days, so you better be prepared, Kakashi said, sighing in irritation. Everyone nodded, and they started out on their first mission out of the village. After around 15 minutes, Hinata decided to break the silence. Um, Tazuna-san, you came from Wave, correct? Tazuna nodded. What's it like? Hinata asked, timidly pushing her fingers together. Tazuna sighed. It is a beautiful place. There is plenty of flora and foliage, and the people there are so kind. However, recently we entered an economic slump. We are unable to import or export goods due to certain reasons. So, we are slowly being starved of our income and the people are suffering. Poverty rates have doubled, and many people have fled. Tazuna said. Hanada nodded. Though unseen, Kakashi was listening in, taking note of the sadness, and slight note of anger in the man's voice. That sucks, Naruto said. Tazuna nodded. They continued one for a while longer in silence, before they stumbled upon a puddle. Kit, there is chakra in that puddle, Kurama said, sensing two presences in the puddle. Naruto nodded, though it was so small only Kakashi noticed it. Then he ran and jumped in a puddle. Cool. A puddle in the middle of nowhere where there hasn't been raining in a while. This is a sure resilient puddle, Naruto said, dancing around. Tazuna and Sasuke sighed, though Sasuke understood the unlined message. Enemies, around Shin level. He thought. Hanada also understood, along with Kakashi. They continued on. Behind them, two figures slowly rise out of the puddle and rushed Kakashi. One down, they said simultaneously, ripping Kakashi apart with two bladed chains. Naruto immediately turned and touched the chain, freezing it instantly, while Sasuke rushed the one on the left, and Hanada rushed the one on the right. Sasuke spat out a fireball that the Chunin, forcing him to dodge, before he threw a kunai to pin him to a tree. Then, he rushed and punched him out. Hanada, rushed the other Chunin and hit a couple of chakra points, shutting down the muscles in his arms. Then, she spun and kicked him into another tree knocking him out. A Naruto appeared next to both of them, and both froze them up to their neck in ice. Kakashi appeared next to one of them and I smiled. Tazuna's eyes widened in surprise. How are you still alive? He asked. Kakashi pointed at his remains, revealing nothing but a couple of wood chunks. Substitution jutsu, extremely convenient, Kakashi said, I smiling. Naruto and Sasuke smirked, while Hinata smiled softly. Good job, team, you handled the situation extremely well, Kakashi said, nodding that the three. Wait, why did you let them fight if you were still alive? Tazuna asked, confused. Kakashi's persona turned grim. I needed to know who they were after. Tazuna, we have much to talk about, Kakashi said, pulling Tazuna away from the genin. Naruto tilted his head slightly. I wonder what they need to talk about. I bet it is important if. Kakashi was so serious, Naruto said, nudging Hinata. She nodded. That makes sense, I bet it's about why two chunin were attacking for, seemingly, no reason. Naruto nodded at this, along with Sasuke. Kakashi and Tazuna walked back, with Tazuna looking at Kakashi slightly afraid. This mission is at least a B rank now, I will leave it up to you whether or not we continue, Kakashi stated. Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata all shook their heads. We won't abandon this mission. I hope you are willing to explain the details more but walk and talk please. Naruto spoke up. The other two nodded, along with Kakashi. They started walking again. It appears that Tazuna was hiding information about this mission. Wave, is in poverty, as you may know, but it is being forced that way by a man named Gato, Sasuke's eyes widened at this. You mean Gato shipping, that Gato, Kakashi nodded, he is one of the richest people in the world, Sasuke exclaimed, Naruto and Hinata's eyes both widened as well, Kakashi nodded once again, yes, apparently, Gato bought all of the ports in Wave, which is an island nation, whoever controls the port controls the land. So, he is draining all of the ports of money, and so the people became poor. Tazuna here, is building a bridge to the mainland, which would break the tyranny of Gato. So, Gato is targeting him, Kakashi explained, earning nods here and there in accordance to the story. So, what if Gato just blew up the bridge? Naruto asked. Tazuna paled. That is why we have to kill Gato. Without an employer, 
any missing nin he may have hired will leave. And, we wouldn't have to worry about him again, Kakashi said. Naruto nodded. Soon, the mist started to roll into their surroundings, followed by the sound of waves crashing against the shore. We are close, I have someone who will give us a boat ride to the island, Tazuna said. Once they reached the shore, they spotted a small boat sat at the shore. A man waved at them. Walking over, Tazuna smiled. Takashi, thank you for helping me, he said. Takashi nodded, before motioning to get in. Clambering in the boat, Naruto sniffed. He liked the smell of the ocean. Salt, water, and seafoam were present in the air, and he grinned. They set off, waves shaking the boat slightly. I can see why it's called the land of waves, Hanada whispered. Sasuke and Naruto nodded in agreement. Soon, a giant shadow overcame the boat, and they looked up. A bridge, a giant one at that. Whoa, Naruto said. Tazuna grinned in pride. That's her, my bridge. It took a while, but we should be done in about a week, he said, grinning. Naruto nodded. It's huge, he said in awe. Sasuke smirked. That's what she said, he said. Naruto smirked back. In your case, that's what he said, Naruto said, smirking. Hanada slapped him upside the head, earning a complaint from the boy. Hush, we are getting close to the island, Takashi said. Everyone nodded. Soon, they could see the silhouette of Wave, getting closer. They came to a halt at the shore, only 15 minutes later. Thank you for this Takashi, I know it is risking your family to be here, Tazuna said. Takashi nodded. Just finish that bridge Tazuna, he said, smiling. Tazuna nodded. They started to walk away, as Takashi pushed away from the shore. The mist was heavy in this area, making Naruto's senses go haywire. Naruto, there is chakra in this mist, be careful, Vixen Chan whispered in Naruto's mind. Naruto acknowledged the warning and gave a pointed look at Kakashi. Be careful, Kakashi nodded. Naruto felt a presence to his left and immediately threw a kunai, making Hanada jump slightly. Feeling the presence disappear instantly, he cursed. Damn, he said, walking over to collect his kunai, only to see a snow-white rabbit shaking in fear. Damn, they have a sensor, were the thoughts of a nearby man. I might as well engage quickly. A swoosh met Naruto's ears. Get down. Both Naruto and Kakashi yelled at the same time. Everyone hit the dirt, but Naruto was slightly too slow. His head slowly slid off of his head. Naruto. Hanada shouted. The head shattered, then reformed on said boy's head. He smiled. Kakashi Hataki, and a devil fruit eater. No wonder why the demon brothers lost, the man said. Zabuza Momochi, the demon of the mist. What a pleasant surprise. Team, stay behind me, he is out of your league. Especially yours Sasuke, he uses what jutsu. Kakashi said. They nodded. Zabuza grinned, and slowly, the mist got even thicker. Hanada. Naruto shouted, nodding. Hanada used her Byakugan, only to gasp. I can't see through it. It is coated in a thick miasma of chakra, blocking my vision. She cried. Naruto cursed. A ominous laughing seemingly reverberated around them. There are eight kill points. Larynx, spine, lungs, liver, jugular, subclavian artery, kidneys, heart. I wonder which one I shall go for this time, Zabuza said, spiking his killing intent. The blonde didn't seem to even feel it while the Hyuga girl and the Uchiha were shaking like leaves. He grinned. His first targets. Naruto's sharp ears picked up the sound of a blade flying towards them. He immediately moved and blocked with a blade of ice, though he was pushed back. Kakashi appeared behind Zabuza and stabbed him with a kunai. Zabuza disappeared with a splash of water only to cut Kakashi in half. Another splash, and Zabuza's eyes widened. He felt a kunai against his neck. Game over, Kakashi said his voice dripping with venom. Zabuza laughed. Monkey see, monkey do, won't work on me, he said. The Zabuza being held disappeared with another splash, and the real Zabuza appeared and kicked Kakashi to the nearby pond. Kakashi fell in with a splash, not having enough time to channel chakra to his legs. Zabuza appeared, and suddenly, a bubble of water appeared around Kakashi, trapping him. Crap, everyone, run, he is too much for you to handle. Kakashi shouted at his team. Naruto shook his head. Kakashi growled, before he saw the smirk on Naruto's face. He smirked as well. Sasuke, I have a plan, Naruto said. Sasuke grinned and nodded. After a couple of seconds, 
Naruto dashed forward, and threw a couple of shurikens at Zabuza, who blocked them with his sword easily. What he didn't see, however, was that one of them were made of true ice. The moment it touched the water, the entire pond froze, including the bubble. Along with all the chakra in said bubble, Kakashi smirked, and grabbed Zabuza's hand and flung him across the frozen lake, slamming him down into the ice. Naruto teleported next to the downed Zabuza and poked him, causing ice to start to crystallize along his body. Suddenly, two needles shot out and hit Zabuza in the neck, killing him instantly. The ice stopped crawling up his arm at his shoulder. An Anbu appeared next to his corpse. Thank you for your help, I've been hunting Zabuza for a while now, and I can finally go home now. Thank you, the figure said, a girl judging by the perfume that hit Naruto's nose. The girl made a hand sign, and vanished. Kakashi slumped down, he forgot that he opened his Sharingan at some point during that fight, and he was exhausted. Can you help me Naruto? We need to get to Tazuna's house. Naruto nodded and helped Kakashi stumble over to the rest of the team. Sasuke was pouting. You forgot to let me help out in the plan, Sasuke said. Naruto laughed. Tazuna-san, please show us the way to your home, Kakashi asked. The drunkard nodded, his eyes wide. It isn't far, he said, taking the lead. A couple of minutes later, they were knocking on the door of Tazuna's house. A young woman opened the door, saw Tazuna, and started to cry in happiness. Father, you're home, she said, embracing him. Tazuna laughed. Thanks to these super ninja, he said. The girl gasped at the condition Kakashi was in and beckoned them inside, laying Kakashi on the couch. My name is Tsunami, if you need anything, please ask, she said. Kakashi nodded tiredly. Then he looked at his team, and his eyes hardened. Guys, I think Zabuza is still alive, he said. What? Naruto said. Kakashi nodded. We are so screwed. Fillers, fillers everywhere. We are so screwed, Tazuna said. Naruto shook his head. We beat him once, and even if he has an accomplice, we will be able to do it again, especially if we train. Besides, he still hasn't seen all of our abilities. All he knows is I control ice, Sasuke can do a fire jutsu, and Hinata has a Byakugan. He also may know about certain abilities of the Sharingan. Naruto explained. Tazuna frowned, and nodded. I guess, he mumbled. Kakashi I smiled. Amazing deduction skills Naruto. He complimented. Naruto grinned. Sasuke sighed. Of course you would be happy at a small amount of praise, he mumbled. Naruto glared slightly. Hanada giggled. Kakashi sighed. I estimate he will be recovered in about a week, so I will be training you in chakra exercises, along with your own unique abilities. Naruto, your ice abilities, Sasuke, your fire abilities, and Hanada, you will be training in your Jukan and your Byakugan, along with some elemental training. Kakashi said. His team nodded. Dinner time. Tsunami called. Naruto grinned and immediately ran to the table. Yes. I'm starving. Itadakimas. Naruto shouted. Hanada sighed and shook her head, smiling. Everyone else sat down and also said. Itadakimas, followed by a sigh of satisfaction. With the sound of scraping utensils, Kakashi coughed. So, Naruto, I heard you were working on a new technique. Fuinjutsu if I remember, correct? This is the first time I've heard of you playing with the ceiling arts, he spoke up. Naruto nodded, smiling lightly. I heard that the fourth Hokage was a master of the stuff, so I decided to try and learn it. Surprisingly, it is coming to me fairly easily. I'm already able to make intermediate ceiling scrolls and I have created my own type of tag. I call it the Frostbang tag. It's basically a double-layered elemental seal with a trigger. Wind and water elements, though finding the right proportions for the seal was difficult. I don't want the seal to have too little ice or too much water so the wind won't be able to freeze at all, Naruto explained. Kakashi nodded. What is it supposed to do? Hanada asked. Naruto grinned. It is supposed to instantly freeze whatever it's attached to. He grinned wider, a flash freeze. He exclaimed. Everyone laughed, though Sasuke sighed. Puns, ugh, he sighed out. Again, everyone laughed. Sasuke glared lightly, Naruto smirked, and did a hand seal before transforming. A puff of smoke later and a blonde girl was rubbing up against Sasuke. Oh Sasuke-kun, Naruko moaned. Sasuke's eye twitch and he smacked Naruko, breaking the transformation. That confirms it. He's gay, Naruto said, grinning. Sasuke's eye twitch again. I. Am. Not. Gay. 
he said, accenting each word. Naruto rolled his eyes. Aha, uh -huh. that's why you broke my hinge, he said, grinning. Hanada giggled from Naruto's teasing. Kakashi was passed out in the back from a nosebleed. Naruto coughed. Pervert, Hanada said, looking distastefully at their sensei. Naruto grinned, as Kakashi stood up, wiping at his mask. Okay, go to sleep, it is late and you are going to start your training at 5 a.m. tomorrow. You'll want it, Kakashi said, blushing, even though they couldn't see it. His genin nodded and all went to their respective assigned rooms. That night, Naruto decided to visit his vixen. Mindscape. Naruto awoke in a familiar place, and immediately ran to the throne room of the looming castle in his mind. He walked in, grinning at the beautiful woman in front of him. Kura-chan, I'm back. Did you miss me? He said, embracing the woman, who smiled. Of course Naru-kun. You need to talk to me more through the link, it gets lonely with only a old dragon to talk to. He is kind of boring. She said, followed by an indignant huff from Koritatsu. They laughed at his expense, causing him to grumble in annoyance. Naruto rolled his eyes. I apologize Kura-chan, I have just been kind of busy lately, Naruto said, rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. Kurama giggled at Naruto's antics. Then she glared playfully. So, you're so busy you can't even spare a thought to me. How rude, she exclaimed. Naruto started to wave his hands frantically. No, no, that's not it at all. I just forget, that's all, he mumbled out the last part pathetically. Kurama giggled once again. I'm just teasing Naru-kun, I know you're busy, she smiled. Naruto sighed in relief. I have to go Kura-chan, I'll talk to you later, okay? He said. Kurama nodded, as Naruto started to fade from the mindscape. Real world. As Naruto groggily opened his eyes, Sasuke was wide awake, and decided to get some payback for the day before. He steadily approached Naruto's bed, making hand signs. Water style. Water stream jutsu, he whispered, before a small stream of water splashed Naruto in the face, forcing him awake instantly. He looked at Sasuke's smirking form, pissed. What the hell, you asshole, Naruto yelled, sprinting at Sasuke, dripping wet. Sasuke laughed, and jumped out the window. Naruto grumbled. Damn him, he sighed, before starting to change into his everyday clothing. Naruto-kun, what is all the commotion about Eep? Hanada squeaked, opening the door, only to see Naruto shirtless. She immediately closed the door, apologizing profusely. Naruto laughed. Today was going to be interesting. Will of Fire Manifestation After Naruto and Sasuke had their little fight, Kakashi told them to meet him out in the woods in the back of the house. Upon arriving, they saw Kakashi standing there, eye smiling. Today, we start training. Naruto, Sasuke, I want you working together on your devil fruits. Hanada, since both your teammates have devil fruits, I am going to get you started on something most people don't start until Chunin. I am going to teach you elemental chakra control. First, let's find what your elemental affinity is, shall we? Kakashi said, his smile never leaving his eyes. Hanada nodded, along with her to male teammates. Kakashi gave her a paper and told her to channel chakra through it. She did. Instantly, the paper became soaked, to the shock of the three genin, though for different reasons. It looks like you have a water affinity. Luckily, we are surrounded by plenty of water, so I can teach you a couple of jutsu. First, I will teach you two jutsu, one defensive, one offensive. The first one is called water style, water encampment wall, which can be used to block plenty of other jutsu. The second jutsu I'll be teaching you is called water style, water bullet jutsu which shoots a small bullet of water. Both of these jutsu are C rank. Here are the hand signs, Kakashi said, showing both of the hand signs for Hinata, who mimicked them. Nodding, Hanada went to go practice by a small pond. Naruto and Sasuke decided to practice their abilities by having Naruto create a wall of ice, and Sasuke had to try and melt it. This allowed Naruto to practice making denser ice, and Sasuke to make stronger flames. They kept at it until Naruto's wall became so dense that Sasuke couldn't melt it anymore. Nodding, Naruto turned to his teammate. We should practice our individual powers now, do you want to see what I've been working on? Naruto said, prodding at Sasuke. He nodded. Naruto walked away a couple of steps, and held out his hand. Ice release. Blizzarding rotation, Naruto called out. Immediately, a small blizzard appeared in front of him. 
The moment one of the snowflakes touched an object, it would explode in a shower of ice. Sasuke looked at Naruto, grinning. That was awesome. But, why did you say ice release, instead of just calling out your move? Sasuke asked. Naruto grinned. Because that was one of my first combinations of chakra and my devil fruit, you should try it, Naruto said. Sasuke nodded, before holding out his hand and condensing some fire into it. Then, he started to focus chakra into the flame. Immediately, he could feel the heat in his palm start to rise, the flame turning blue. He grinned, and threw it at a tree. Immediately, it vaporized the tree. I think I'll call that plasma style. Vapor shot, Sasuke said, grinning wildly with Naruto. Naruto nodded in approval. Hey, do you have a new attack? You said a while ago that you found an awesome attack, Naruto said. Sasuke nodded, and once again, he held out his hand, above him this time. Quickly, a giant ball of fire started to form, more flames swirling around it. Firestorm, Sasuke called out. Then he threw it. Upon contact with the giant ball of flame, it exploded, tendrils of fire swirling around, scorching everything it touched. Naruto thrust his hand out to the flames that were slowly spreading. Frostwave, he called out, and a small pulse of cold air blew out the flames. He sighed. You are way too destructive, Sasuke, he said, sweat dropping. Sasuke laughed. Naruto shook his head, grinning. Let's go back inside. Tomorrow I want you to be able to control that fire of yours, Naruto said. Sasuke nodded, and they started to walk back to the house. When they walked in, they saw Tsunami making dinner, and Hinata laying down on the couch, her hair soaked. Naruto grinned, and sneaked over and poked her. She jumped up in surprise, before smiling tiredly at him. Naruto-kun, good to see you, she yawned. Naruto laughed. Tired, Hina Haim, he asked, smiling a bit. She nodded, yawning again. I used a lot of chakra practicing my techniques, she said, pouting. You and Sasuke are lucky devil fruits don't use chakra, she sighed, slumping down. Naruto slid next to her, hugging her lightly. He started to caress her hair, until she fell asleep in his arms. He smiled lightly, and picked her up to bring her to her room. As he came back downstairs, he spotted Sasuke smirking. So, she was tired. Naruto nodded, before walking to the dinner table and grabbing a bite to eat. Chakra exhaustion, she was practicing hard. I think she feels like she is being left behind. Honestly, she could give me a run for my money, Naruto said, confusing Sasuke. How? You have a Logia fruit, she shouldn't even be able to hurt you, he said. Naruto smiled lightly. She has an ability that allows her to negate my devil fruit, allowing her to hit me. I believe she calls it hockey. When she combines it with her Jukin, it hurts a lot, he explained. Sasuke tilted his head in confusion. What does Haki do? How does she do it? Sasuke said. She discovered it when her father finally pushed her to the snapping point. She activated her by a Kugan, and suddenly, her palms turned pitch black and she rushed him, slapping it against his chest. Needless to say, Hiyashi learned to fly for three seconds. She trained herself to use it on command. She told me there were three types. One allows her to create an armor on her skin, bypassing our devil fruit defenses. The other allows her to sense everything around her, without her by a Kugan. The final one allows her to knock people out who are substantially weaker than her, and weaken those who are slightly weaker, he explained. Sasuke nodded. That sounds interesting, he said, nodding. Naruto agreed. Soon, they went to sleep. Naruto didn't sleep very well, however. He tossed and turned, pain racking his body. The next morning, there were bags under his eyes, drawing both concern and curiosity from his team. Naruto-kun, Hanada asked. Naruto yawned, and nodded. Just didn't sleep very well, he said. Hanada glanced at Sasuke. Um, Naruto, look behind you, Sasuke said. Naruto tilted an eyebrow, before turning to look behind him. What are you talking about Sasuke? He asked. Hanada sighed, and walked over to him, before reaching down and pulling. Ow, the hell, he said, before freezing. He looked down at his tail. Oh, he said. He put a hand on top of his head, feeling small ears. He grinned, before trying to wrap his tail around Hanada. It took a second, but he managed, earning a giggle out of the girl. Naru-kun, she laughed, being tickled by the small hairs. Naruto grinned, 
before tickling her a bit more, earning laughter once again. Naruto-kun, you have finally reached a point where you have gotten one tale of power. You are around the strength of the Aikibi no. Shukaku, Kurama smiled. Naruto gaped. He was as strong as a tailed beast. But only because of your devil fruit and chakra capacity, Koritatsu said, breaking all fantasies of Naruto standing tall above all the ninja in the world. Naruto anime cried. Why did you have to ruin my dreams? He shouted in his mind, earning a giggle from Kurama. He smiled, as he wrapped his arms around Hinata, shaking his fist at the dragon in his mind. Naruto, why do you have a tail again? Sasuke asked. Kurama said I would get a tail once I am at a certain power. Right now, I am around on par with the Aikibi no Shukaku. He explained, earning shocked faces of his team. He grinned. By the way, Naruto, you and I are going to clear out all of the bandit camps on the island. Kakashi said, Sasuke, you and Hinata are going to escort the bridge builder to the bridge and protect him, he said, earning nods from his team. Hi, the three of they confirmed. Naruto and Kakashi vanished from the room, as Hinata and Sasuke walked to Tazuna to inform them of what was happening. Okay, Naruto, this will be one of the first mass killing you will do, can you handle it? Kakashi said. Naruto nodded grimly, as they jumped from tree to tree. Okay, create as many ice clones as you can, and spread out. Kakashi said. Naruto nodded, and suddenly, there were hundreds of ice Naruto's standing around, before they all spread out. Ice clones were able to use all of Naruto's ice techniques, but no chakra. They also were able to share vision with Naruto when they focused, using an ice lens. Naruto and Kakashi decided to wait, until Naruto got messages from his clones. Apparently, there were seven camps, each with around 100 bandits. He got one final message. The found Gato. Naruto sighed. This was going to be a hassle. Hello Demon Kun. PKMN Trainer Cam. Could you add Fu? Answer. I will be saving Fu, and getting her into Konoha, but I will not add anyone else to Naruto's girlfriend list. This goes for everything else, including the Femme Sasuke idea from Spark 681 though that is an interesting idea and I may do it if multiple people ask. If he does become a girl, he will not be with Naruto, however. Gamerlover41592, this was a good chapter and very sweet as well so will Hanada be the only one to learn hockey? Answer. No, Hanada will not be the only one to have hockey, but she will be one of the only people with conquering hockey. I will not give it to Naruto or Sasuke, but I am going to give it to Rock Lee, along with the rest of the types of hockey. Just because I care about that dude, and his lack of chakra is good for hockey. That is all the questions I got for the second time, thank you all for reading. So, what are we going to do? Kill Gato. Wait, Naruto asked. Kakashi as they jumped through the trees to the first bandit camp. Kakashi sighed. Knowing people like Gato, he will betray Zabuza and his accomplice if they kill us. We may be able to get Zabuza on our side if we provide enough evidence that they will be betrayed. We may even be able to convince them to join Konoha. That would be the best situation, and knowing you stupid luck, we might even get it. Let's. Just hope, Kakashi said, stopping right before they reached the bandit camp. Naruto looked over at Kakashi and nodded. Naruto dashed forward, his hands covered in a thin mist. He slammed into the middle of the bandit camp and called out. Ice Age, he spoke, his voice quiet, but filled with power. At first, it was just a small thin layer of ice, but it slowly turned into a sheet, spreading rapidly throughout the camp. It froze everything, excluding the tent that had some hostages, that Kakashi already went to save. Then, Naruto spoke once more. Shatter, followed by all of the ice cracking, and shattering into a sparkling mist. Silence followed. Where there were drunken laughter and the cries of startled women, was now silent. Naruto sighed, as Kakashi landed next to him in shock. Naruto. Did you just do that? You killed every single bandit in an instant. He exclaimed. Naruto nodded. They weren't able to free themselves from the ice, so they became solid. I shattered their hearts. Naruto shuddered. He just murdered an entire camp of human beings, scum, but humans nevertheless. The only reason he wasn't vomiting was that there were no bodies, just flakes of ice. Kakashi nodded with sympathy. If you want, you can travel back home, just leave a couple of clones with me, I need surveillance, Kakashi said. Naruto nodded weakly and started to run in the general direction of Tazuna's house. After a couple of minutes, 
he stopped and curled up by a tree. He started to fall asleep, a couple of tears trailing down his face, entering a dreamless sleep. The next morning, Naruto jerked to sleep at the feeling of a hand shaking his shoulder. Instinctively, he immediately flipped whoever was touching him on their back and landed on top of them, a kanai to their throat. After gaining his sense of reason, he looked down at who dared to touch a sleeping shinobi. It was a girl, a beautiful girl, who was currently very red. Naruto was only a couple of inches from her face. Naruto blushed heavily, and quickly got off of the girl, helping her up. I am so sorry, Naruto said, bowing his head in apology. The girl stammered for a second, before settling for a nod, looking down. It's my fault, I shouldn't have awoken a ninja, she said, pointing towards Naruto's hit I ate. Naruto laughed lightly. So, what's your name? What are you doing so far out in the forest? He asked, tilting his head. The girl smiled lightly. My name is Haku Yuki, I am searching for herbs for my father, he is extremely sick, she said. Naruto nodded. Would you like some help? He asked. Haku nodded, smiling. For the next hour or so, they searched the clearing for herbs, chatting animatedly. Longer and longer, Naruto found he really wanted to be Haku's friend. So, Naruto-san, what were you doing sleeping out here? She asked. Naruto grimaced, looking slightly pale. I had a mission last night, one that ended in my first kill, or rather, kills, he said, wincing. Haku nodded sympathetically. The first kills always are the worst, I hear, she says. Naruto nodded in agreement. Haku gingerly gave Naruto a comforting hug, blushing a bit. Thanks, you know, it's so nice to meet someone so kind so far out here, we should keep in touch. He said smiling. Haku hesitated for a second, before she nodded in agreement, smiling lightly. That would be nice, Naruto-san, Haku said, her face tinged a bit red. Naruto nodded before his nose twitched. I am sorry Haku-chan, but I must go, my sensei is looking for me, Naruto said. Haku nodded, and Naruto jumped away, leaving her to wander back to her father. She was nice, Kurama said. Naruto nodded in agreement. She was, he replied, smiling lightly. She might be his first pen pal. Oh goody. Kurama snorted at Naruto's strange thinking. He smiled lightly, before landing down in the back of Tazuna's yard. He walked over to the door and knocked. After a moment, Tsunami opened the door, before welcoming Naruto in. Where were you yesterday? She asked. Naruto shrugged non-committedly, before continuing to walk up the stairs. Kakashi-sensei? He asked. After a moment Kakashi walked out of his room, yawning slightly. He blearily looked at Naruto. What is it? He asked, yawning again. Naruto sighed. Do you know when Zabuza will attack? And what about Gato? Did you find out if he is going to betray Zabuza? He asked. Zabuza is planning to attack in four days, and yes, Gato is going to betray him. I want you to go to Zabuza's hideout, which is north of the island, and tell him. If he doesn't believe you, give him this letter, Kakashi said, handing Naruto a scroll. It was from Gato, he was sending it to one of his connections, bragging about it. It has his seal at the bottom as well, he said. Naruto nodded, before going out the door again, this time as a messenger, not an assassin. Once Naruto got outside, he shattered, before reforming in the middle of the bandit camp he destroyed, some ice being left over. Then, he started to head north, sniffing for any scent he could find. He created a couple of ice clones to spread out and waited. After a while, he got a message from one and shattered to it. In front of him, was Zabaza's base. He jumped down and walked up, creating a clone to check for any traps. Then, he knocked, and walked in, only to get a Sanban to his neck. Calm down, I'm here to talk, Haku. He said, before realizing who had the Sanban at his neck. There, in all her glory, was Haku. Naruto, what are you doing here? She asked pulling away slightly, but still remaining alert. I need to speak with Zabuza, I have some information that doesn't make us enemies anymore, he said, nodding at her. Hesitantly, she nodded, before leading him into the main room. On the couch, sat Zabuza, a heating pack on his arm. Haku, what are you doing? He barked, before wincing slightly. Zabuza-sama, Naruto-kun here just wants to talk. He says he has information that makes us not enemies, she said. Zabuza grunted. Well then, 
Spit it out boy, or I'll kill you here and now, Zabuza growled out. Naruto remained unfazed. Gato is going to betray you. We intercepted a letter going to one of his suppliers, and he basically stated that he was going to wait for you to either die or kill us, then ambush you when you were weakened with a couple hundred bandits. Here is the proof, Naruto said, holding out the letter, only for Haku to grab it, examining it for a trap. After a moment, she nodded and held it out for Zabuza, who grabbed it roughly. Opening it, his eyes skimmed through it, before noticing the insignia at the bottom. Damn. This is real, that's Gato's handwriting and insignia, well, Brad looks like we're not enemies anymore. Do you mind removing her ice, it doesn't seem to want to melt. Zabuza said. Haku stood shocked for a moment. Wait, Naruto-kun did the ice? She asked. Zabuza nodded, as Naruto walked over to him, and touched the ice, shattering it. He grunted. Thanks, brat, he said, before standing up. No problem. So what's the plan? Do we wait for Gato on the bridge? Kill him now? Naruto asked. Zabuza shrugged. Take me to where you're staying. I want to talk to the copycat, Zabuza said. Naruto nodded and walked out the door. Damn, this was a confusing matter. They jumped up into the trees, moving at a steady pace towards Tazuna's house. After about 15 minutes, they dropped down into the backyard. Stay here please, I don't want to startle my teammates, Naruto said. The two nodded. Naruto walked inside and called for Kakashi. After a moment, he appeared, walking down the stairs. Naruto gestured outside, before going there, Kakashi following. Hey copycat, how we going to kill Gato? Zabuza said, the moment he saw Kakashi. Kakashi sighed, before looking down at Naruto. You had to bring them here. He drawled lazily. Naruto shrugged. Whatever Cyclops sensei, they're not enemies, he said. Kakashi nodded, before motioning Zabuza to follow him into the house, leaving Haku and Naruto sitting there alone. Awkwardly, after a moment, Sasuke and Hanada walked outside to join them. Oh, hey guys, Naruto said. Hanada smiled at him, while Sasuke looked towards Haku. Who is she? He asked. Naruto smiled. That's Haku, Zabuza's apprentice, adopted daughter, he said. Sasuke looked towards Naruto raising an eyebrow, before looking back at Haku. Nice to meet you, he said lazily, acting a lot like Kakashi. Haku smiled. Nice to meet you too, she said cheerfully. Haku, these are my teammates, Hinata Hayuga and Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto said. Haku smiled at them. A moment later, Kakashi and Zabuza walked out of the house, before Zabuza grabbed Haku and whispered something to her, causing her to nod and jump off with him. Kakashi motioned his team inside. Okay, here is the plan. Jealousy. Okay, here is the plan. We will be going to the bridge in three days, waiting with Zabuza for Gato to ambush us. Then, me and Zabuza will clear out the bandits and Naruto and Haku use their ice abilities to create a wall, barricading the bandits from escape. Hanada will stay at the house, and Sasuke will cast a genjutsu on Gato to make him. Tell us where he is keeping all of his funds, where we will take enough for an A-ranked mission and give the rest back to Wave. Then Zabuza will head over to Mist and join the rebellion, and Haku will come with us back to Konoha, Kakashi explained. Everyone nodded. Will Haku agree to come with us? She treats Zabuza as her father figure. Naruto said, scrunching his face up in thought. Kakashi nodded. Zabuza assured she would be fine with it. Kakashi smiled. Naruto nodded. We should get started with our training, but Naruto, you should get some sleep, I think you have only had around 6 hours of sleep in the past 2 days, Kakashi said. Naruto nodded, and went back inside to sleep, leaving Kakashi to start training Sasuke the Genjutsu and help Hanada explore her hockey a bit more. The next day, when Naruto woke up, he immediately felt a figure next to him. He glanced down to see lavender eyes peering up at him. He smiled down at his girlfriend who snuggled closer up to him. He smiled and pulled her closer to him, sighing contentedly. Hanada smiled, and nuzzled her face into his side. Ahem, Sasuke said, covering his eyes slightly, come on lovebirds, time for training. As a team, he huffed, annoyed at the lack of the three of them training together. But Sasuke, Naruto whined, I was just getting comfortable. Naru-kun, we have to get up, Hanada said. Naruto sighed, and nodded, getting up. Sasuke rolled his eyes at the blushing Hayuga at Naruto being shirtless. Well, let's go, Naruto said, 
walking downstairs, only to see Haku and Zabuza eating breakfast with Kakashi. Oh yeah, Haku will be training with us, Sasuke said. Unnoticed by the males, Haku and Hinata glared at each other, lightning flashing between their eyes, before Hinata went back to hugging Naruto's arm. Haku rolled her eyes and walked over to Naruto and hugged his other arm. Naruto-kun, how do you feel about me training with you, she said, pushing up against him, causing him to blush slightly. I have no objections, he said, smiling lightly. Haku smiled, let go, and swaggered out the door, casting a wink back at him. After staring for a couple of seconds, Hinata slapped him, and huffed in annoyance. Bitch, she whispered to herself. Naruto shook his head and smiled down at his girlfriend. Let's go, Hinaheim, he said, walking after Haku. Hinata sighed, and followed her boyfriend, quickly followed by Sasuke. Sasuke smirked at Hinata and leaned over to whisper. Jealous much, he said snidely, stifling a grin. Hinata glared, as Naruto looked on, totally oblivious. Do you want me to hit you? She hissed, causing Sasuke to pale slightly, but not losing his smirk. Again, Naruto was completely oblivious to this exchange. After a minute or two of walking, the caught up with Haku, who was currently practicing her water manipulation, trying to draw the water up from the morning dew. Seeing her new friends, she lost her concentration, and the small orb of water fell to the ground. She smiled at Naruto, ignoring the smoldering glare from Hinata. So, what are we going to do as training? Naruto asked, grinning. I want to spar with Mrs. Haku, Hinata ground out, by Akugan activating. Haku smirked. Bring it on, princess, she said, annoying Hinata even more. Immediately, Hinata rushed Haku and thrust her hand out, it suddenly flashing to black. Haku dodged to the left, and right before we went to counterattack, Hinata's hand smacked the ground, causing the ground to shake a little and cracks appear in the earth. Haku loss of balance was all Hinata needed. Quickly, she spun and brought her other hand and smacked it against Haku's arms, disabling her. Then she put a hand right next to her heart, and whispered. Naruto. Is. Mine. Her Byakugan enhanced glare unnerved Haku. Haku sighed, and whispered. Sharing is caring Hinata-chan, she winked, shocking Hinata, before she blushed madly at the idea. Haku grinned. That was awesome Hinata-chan. Naruto yelled, running over and embracing the now meek girl. She squealed in surprise, before giggling a bit. Knock it off, lovebirds, Sasuke said. Naruto grinned cheekily. Jealous, Sasuke-chan, he teased. Sasuke glared lightly, before he sighed. I guess, I am tired of being the third wheel. I need a lady friend. He shouted in despair, causing Naruto to snort. The chances of that happening are worse than Kakashi becoming. Hokage, he said. Then he froze, along with Sasuke. Simultaneously, they shuddered. Everyone would have masks, Sasuke whispered. Porn would be mass-produced, Naruto gasped. They both curled up in a ball and cried to themselves. Such bad thoughts, Sasuke moaned. Haku sweat dropped, and looked at Hinata. Does this happen often? She asked. Hinata sighed, and nodded. Poor Hinata, she had to deal with mentally disturbed teammates. After Naruto and Sasuke recovered, they started training, Sasuke and Naruto sparring, while Naruto had a couple of ice clones practicing ice techniques, and getting, giving ideas to Haku. This continued for a while, and after Naruto and Sasuke finished their spar, they started working on chakra exercises, Naruto trying to fold a single piece of grass without touching it with nothing but chakra. He succeeded after a while. Then Kakashi appeared. Yo, he said, I smiling. Naruto and Sasuke immediately started crying in a ball. Kakashi sweat dropped, looking at Hinata for explanations. She shrugged, and went back to studying her hockey ability. He sighed. Naruto, I found a new chakra control exercise for you. He said holding up a pile of multicolored sand. He was grinning mischievously. What's that for? Naruto said, sitting up. Well, I want you to sort this pile of sand by color, using nothing but your chakra. He said. Naruto deadpanned. My control sucks though, he said. Kakashi nodded. This will make it so you may even be able to use basic genjutsu, and if you master the next one, you may be able to use irio. Ninjutsu, he said. Naruto tilted his head. What's the next one? He asked. Kakashi merely held up a pile of colored powder. Naruto cursed in annoyance. Hop to it. Fox boy. Naruto collapsed in exhaustion. Man, 
This exercise sucked. He glared over at the multicolored pile of sand in frustration. The first time he tried to start sorting, he blasted the sand off in every direction. Luckily, Kakashi made a seal that summoned them back into a pile, once again mixed up in a brand new order. It pissed him off, but he kept at it. The second time, he didn't even move the sand. He couldn't imagine what the hell type of concentration the powder would take. He grumbled a bit more, before deciding to go check on how the others were doing. He, Sasuke, wanna spar. I'm exhausted, so maybe it will be fair. Only devil fruits. He asked Sasuke, who was breathing slightly hard. Sasuke smirked at Naruto. Sure, I haven't practiced using only my devil fruit since you introduced to me chakra enhanced versions, he said, hopping up. Naruto grinned, and got into a fighting stance, his skin already freezing slightly. Sasuke did the same, his fists bursting aflame. Instantly, they both dashed forward, raising their fists. Naruto ducked under Sasuke's fist, only to get a flaming knee to the face. Quickly thinking, he grabbed the offending appendage, and pull it out from under Sasuke, and kick him away, using him as a springboard to jump away. Landing soundlessly, he looked up at Sasuke, who waved his hand at him, throwing small green balls of flame. Knowing what was coming next, Naruto hastily created a small dome of ice around him, before he heard the muffled voice of Sasuke. Firefly. Before a large explosion cracked the dome Naruto was sitting in. Quickly, Naruto shattered his dome, and in a rare moment of integrity, he moved the small flakes, and formed them into needles, which started moving rapidly towards Sasuke. He grunted, as he got hit from a few he failed to dodge in time. He quickly flashed in fire, melting the frozen projectiles. Looking up, Sasuke saw Naruto slam his hand on the ground, ice rapidly protruding from his fingers. Ice Age, he called, as ice quickly ran towards Sasuke. Moving swiftly, Sasuke created a small ring of fire around him, acting as a barrier between the frozen ground around him. He quickly expanded the ring, rushing it towards Naruto. Naruto grinned, and thrust his hand at the flames. Concentrating, the air around Naruto suddenly got extremely cold. The moment the flames reached Naruto, they got snuffed out. Naruto grinned, sweating slightly. He wiped off some of the sweat from his forehead, and threw the now frozen needles at Sasuke. Flame bullet. Sasuke called, firing two bullets at the needles, vaporizing them and continuing to Naruto. Naruto just kept still, the frozen air around him acting as a barrier. Okay, I think it is a tie. It is obvious that neither one of us can beat the other with just our devil fruits, you can melt my ice, and I can snuff out your fire. Naruto called out. Sasuke nodded, before they both walked over to where Hinata was training her hockey. When they saw her, they were amazed to see her knock over a tree with a black hand. Wow, Hinata-chan that was amazing. Naruto called out. Blushing, Hinata turned to greet the boys, only to see them both sweating slightly from exhaustion. She giggled and walked over to Naruto, hugging him. Suddenly, Haku also appeared from nowhere, and also hugged Naruto. Naruto-kun did you miss me? She cooed, smiling slightly at how Naruto blushed a bit. Hey, Haku-chan, he faltered slightly at the blush Hinata also got. Haku smirked. Hey, Hinata-chan, did you think about my offer? She whispered slyly. Hinata eeped, going red a bit more. She was conflicted. While she wanted Naruto all to herself, she knew that she was able to share, a parent with Kurama. She did think about what Haku said, and she saw that Naruto clearly thought she was cute. She also knew Haku actually did care for Naruto. Anyo, Haku-chan, I did think about the offer, Naruto-kun, can you and Haku-chan come with me? Hanada stuttered out, Haku smiled, and Naruto nodded. Quietly, they both followed Hanada away, leaving Sasuke to mutter about lucky blondes. So, Hinata-chan, what is this offer I keep hearing about? Naruto said, tilting his head curiously. Hinata eeped again, trying to imitate a turtle. H. Haku-chan recommended we s share you, as a couple, she whispered. Haku smiled at Naruto, who froze, not literally. What now? He asked in shock. Hinata nodded. I decided I would be okay with it, as long as you were, Hinata said, shocking Haku this time as well. She would allow that. Naruto stood in shock. W wait, what, are you sure Hinata-chan? I mean, I do like both of you but, you already have to share. Naruto said. Wait, you have another girlfriend? Haku asked. Naruto nodded. Her name is Kurama, 
Let me introduce you, he said, touching Haku and Hinata on the shoulder. Mindscape. Similar to before, the group appeared in front of a frozen winter castle. Quickly, Naruto grabbed Haku and Hinata's hands and ran into the building. After a couple of moments, they arrived at the throne room. Sitting on the throne, was Kurama. Kura-chan. I brought someone else this time. Meet Haku, Naruto said. Kurama smiled and embraced Naruto, who grinned slightly pervertedly. Hinata sighed, shaking her head, while Haku stood shocked at the fox lady in front of her. So, Naruto, who is this? Where are we? She asked. Naruto grinned. This is Kurama, also known as the Nine-Tailed Fox. And we are currently inside my mindscape. Naruto said. Haku stood frozen in shock. The Nine-Tailed Fox. You mean the Biju? She stuttered out. Naruto nodded, as he stepped back for Hinata to hug Kurama. She is also my first girlfriend. Naruto exclaimed. Hinata nodded, as both of them walked over to Naruto and hugged him. So, are you sure you still want to date Naru-kun? Hinata said, smirking slightly. Haku was shocked, but when she saw the challenging look on Hinata's face, she immediately became determined. Suddenly, she appeared behind Naruto, hugging him from behind. Of course, he is just too cute. She purred into his ear, causing Kurama to smirk, and Hinata to fume in frustration. She almost got her to trip damn it. H. Haku. Naruto stuttered out in surprise. Said girl giggled, causing Naruto to sigh in exasperation. Girls, he mumbled, causing three people to smack him upside the head. Watch it Naru-kun, Kurama purred. All three of us can be, Hinata continued. Dangerous, Haku whispered, causing Naruto to freak out and jump out of their embrace. How the hell did you coordinate that? He shouted, causing all three of them to laugh. Call it, a woman's charm, Kurama said her finger on her chin in a dramatic thinking pose. Naruto sighed once again. Anyways, I'm sorry Kura-chan, we need to go, Naruto said. Kurama sighed, and nodded. Okay Naru-kun, by the way, tonight will be the start of your changes. I'm sure the girls will be happy. Kurama said, shocking Naruto and confusing the girls. Tonight, this is gonna suck, Naruto said, before all three of them vanished from the mindscape, leaving Kurama alone once again. She smiled lightly and went back to sleep. Real world. Well then, I didn't know you were so comfortable with each other already, a voice sounded out, followed by a perverted giggle. Quickly gathering his surroundings, Naruto found that they all ended up leaning on each other when they passed out in the mindscape. Kakashi sensei. Hanada cried out indignantly, a small blush on her face. Kakashi grinned under his mask. Good job Naruto. You make a man proud. Kakashi said throwing a thumbs up. However, he froze once he saw the murderous faces of Hinata and Haku, before sprinting away, narrowly dodging a hockey-infused Juken strike and some ice needles. Get back here, Haku shouted, a tick mark on her head. Kakashi's sweat dropped. No thanks, I would rather not die. Bye, he said, before he vanished in a plume of smoke. The girls sighed at their prey getting away. Damn, Hinata said, disappointed. Haku nodded in agreement. They looked at each other and grinned slightly, before turning their attention to where Naruto was, only to see him passed out, blood coming from his nose, and a perverted smile on his face. My girl's so strong, he mumbled out, causing said girls to shake their head in mirth. Boys, they said simultaneously. They grinned at each other. That night, Naruto felt pain, a lot of pain, darkness swarmed around him. He felt like his body was ripping apart, agony. He could barely understand what was happening around him. Suddenly, the pain intensified to extreme levels, causing him to scream out in agony. He faintly heard a noise, a small subtle screaming drowned out by the red-hot pain by his tailbone and head. He felt his bones rearranging, his organs expanding and shrinking, trying to find a common ground. He felt his ears migrate up on top of his head. A ripping sound reverberated through the room, followed by a faint gasp. Suddenly, it stopped leaving Naruto in sticky sweat-soaked sheets, gasping for air. Naruto-kun, are you okay? Haku asked, concern evident. Hell no. He groaned, trying to flop on his back, only to feel a sharp pain. A startled yelp came out of his mouth. Then he paused. He just yelped. He looked down at his backside, only to see a tail poking out from a hole in his clothing. A foxtail. Then, he slowly reached up and touched his head. Fox ears. Naruto-kun, 
Hirama Chan said the changing was happening tonight, Hanada said, holding up a mirror for Naruto. He was shocked. The transformation he went through astounded him, even if they were smallish. First, instead of human ears on the side of his head, he had two small golden fox ears poking out of his hair. Behind him, a golden tail swung lazily. Opening his mouth, he saw his canines were enlengthioned and the rest of them were still mostly humanoid, if a bit sharper. His blue eyes were now slitted, a fierce look in them. His whiskers were slightly darkened, not at the amount from when he was using Kurama's chakra, but still more pronounced. He also gained a couple inches, now being an inch taller than Sasuke. He grinned. I like this, he said. So do I, Kurama cooed in Naruto's mind. He grinned. Naruto, may I ask if you can control your tail? And try to channel chakra into it, Kakashi said, slowly getting over his shock. Naruto nodded, and focused on his tail, stopping it, before it started to sway again. Then he channeled chakra into the tail. Suddenly, the hairs on the tail froze, before shooting small ice needles in all directions, startling his team. Cool, Naruto said exclaimed, this will work. Battle on the bridge. A N hey everyone, sorry for how I haven't written in a while, I have been busy studying for the end of the year's tests. Also, I would like to apologize, it seems that in chapter 11, I gave Naruto's ears and tail already, so I plan on rewriting and resubmitting the chapter, it wasn't the epic transformation I had in mind. So, I once again apologize to all of you. I also plan on starting to write another story, so I don't have to focus on one story at a time, so go check that out. I plan on alternating updates, one for this one, then the next for the other. So, thank you all for reading. The clinking of silverware was the only noise everyone heard. The reason for this silence happened to be our favorite blonde, calmly eating his breakfast. Tazuna's family was sneaking glances over at the small swishing of his tail, not really eating much. Finally, at a long period of silence, Tazuna spoke up. Um, Naruto-san, what's up with the tail? And the ears? Naruto smiled lightly at Tazuna. What about them? He asked, laughing slightly. He was still tired from last night's ordeal. Why do you have them? Tazuna burst out, before he sat back down, apologizing quietly. Naruto laughed. I apologize old man, but that is classified, he said. Tazuna sighed, and went back to eating silently and shooting glances at the boy. Hanada however, who was sitting next to Naruto, was giggling quietly, playing with the swishing tail. Occasionally, the tail would stiffen, do a weird maneuver, then go back to swishing. Hanada giggled, causing Naruto to smile lightly. A loud crash filled the and Zabuza walked down the stairs, Haku berating the large man. Zabuza, you need to figure out how to stop breaking all of the pots you see. And you don't have to yell, Haya. After each one, Haku said sternly, causing Zabuza to frown. But what if there is money in them? You never know, he said, trailing off. Haku sighed, pinching her nose in frustration. They both looked into the dining room, only for Zabuza to freeze in his tracks after seeing Naruto. He sighed. You know what, brat, I'm not even surprised anymore, he grumbled, earning a chuckle from Naruto. Hey Zabuza, aren't we going to start the, attack, tomorrow? Kakashi asked. Zabuza nodded. He grinned. I can't wait to see the expression on that midget's face. He smirked, joining Kakashi and his team at the table for a meal. Okay, do we need to go over what needs to happen? Kakashi asked, earning shakes of denial. He nodded in acceptance. Good. We are going to rest for today, so we are fresh to fight the bandits, he finished. Well, then I'm just gonna go to sleep, that exercises were tiring. See you later guys, Naruto said, earning confused looks from everyone. Hanada decided to clarify. He didn't get much sleep last night due to the whole tail growing out of him. He is exhausted, she said, bringing nods of understanding from everyone at the table. That's understandable. Kakashi said, before he sighed. Let's just hope he wakes up in time for him to join us. Next morning, Naruto's sleep was rudely interrupted by a loud scream. Ninja instincts kicking in, he rapidly awoke and fully dressed himself in. Record time. He peeked down the stairs to see two rogue samurai about to cut down Inari. He growled, and quickly formed a trail of ice in front of him, teleporting with it. A clang sounded throughout the room, as Naruto blocked the blades with Mofubuki, before the blades froze instantly. Quickly spinning, 
he decapitated one of them and knocked out the other. Good job, Inari. You protected your mother. I am proud of you. Now, where is Kakashi? He said, glancing back at the shivering boy. They are at the bridge, he said. Naruto nodded, Mo Fubuki vanishing into a storage seal in his wrist. He quickly started to run towards the bridge, his senses telling him a fight was happening. He frowned. That wasn't part of the plan. A couple of minutes later, he arrived, quickly surveying the battle. He didn't like what he saw. Earlier. Damn it. Naruto is still asleep. Zabuza growled. Kakashi sighed. Let's leave without him. He can catch up, he said, earning nods from the rest of his team. He sighed again, as they walked out the door with Tazuna. A couple of minutes passed, and they arrived at the bridge, glad to see none of the workers arrived like they asked. However, the mist around the bridge unnerved them. Zabuza, did you create this mist? Hanada asked. Zabuza frowned. No. Why? He asked. Hanada frowned. It's filled with chakra, she said, as two figures casually walked out of the mist. Well, if it isn't Zabuza, long time no see. A voice came from the taller of the two. Zabuza frowned. That voice, the figures could now be visible. The taller one had blue skin, shark-like teeth, and a giant bandaged figure on his back. The other one, who remained silent, had pure white hair, ocean blue eyes, and also had shark-like teeth. They both had black cloaks with red clouds on them as well. The shorter one was glaring hard at Zabuza. Kisame, who's the brat? Zabuza growled, causing the fish man to laugh. This is Suigetsu Hazuka, and he is my apprentice, he said. Zabuza chuckled. Looks like we both got apprentices while we were apart, he said, as Haku stepped forward, remaining completely emotionless. Well, enough of the chit-chat. Hand over the jinchuriki, now, Kisame said, flaring a bit of ki. Kakashi frowned, along with Zabuza. Haku lost her composure for a second, before she glared. We will never let you have him. Hanada shouted, her Byakugan activated. Kisame laughed. Then we will have to take him by force. Kisame said, a bloodthirsty grin playing at his lips. Immediately, Team 7 and Zabuza entered battle formations. You must realize how stupid you're right now. It's 5 against 2, two of us are elite Jonans and Haku is Junin level as well. I would say my students are also easily low Junin. Kakashi said, hiding the skill level of his team a little. Kisame laughed. Who said we were alone? He said, we decided to pay a little visit to Tazabaza's old employer. He pays us to kill the bridge builder, we also get the Jinchuriki, win-win for us, he grinned, as two more figures walked out behind them. One of them had dull white hair, black eyes, and the shadows seemed to cling to him. The other one had light brown hair, brown eyes, and walked lazily, much like Inara. Oh, shit, Kakashi whispered, the white-haired kid is Shade, or at least that's what he is called. He has a bloodline that allows him to manipulate shadows even more than the Nara's like it's an extension of himself. He is known for completely annihilating a village. I believe it is actually a devil fruit though. He is A-ranked, near S, Kakashi said, his eyes becoming a bit more determined. What about the average looking one? Sasuke asked. This time, it was Zabuza who spoke up. Kira Dokueki, he is a B-ranked Junin. Don't let his looks fool you, he can poison you by simply touching you. Also maybe a devil fruit, Zabuza said. Everyone nodded. I'll handle the poison guy, I can purge myself of the venom, and my hockey will harm him if he can be intangible like Naruto Kunen. Sasuke, Hanada said, her Byakugan acting as an intimidation factor. Sasuke nodded. Then I'll handle Suigetsu with Haku, he said. Zabuza and Kakashi looked at each other and nodded. Zabuza immediately charged towards Kisame, while Kakashi rushed Shade. Everyone else also rushed their targets. With Sasuke and Haku, Sasuke and Haku charged Suigetsu, who was grinning like a maniac now. Suigetsu unsealed a giant claymore and swung it at the approaching duo. Rapidly stopping to avoid being decapitated, Sasuke swung his hand, a wave of fire flying from his fingers. Suigetsu simply laughed, as he vanished into a puddle and reappeared a bit closer, already swinging his sword. Haku grabbed Sasuke out of the way. What the hell was that? Sasuke shouted, a devil fruit. Suigetsu grinned, and shook his head in the negative. Bloodline. He grinned wildly, before charging once again, acting much like Zabuza. Reckless. Haku. Ice mirrors. Sasuke called out, causing her to nod. 
She quickly jumped back, as Sasuke blocked Suigetsu with a kanai, grunting slightly. Crystal ice mirrors. Haku called out, quickly followed by panels of ice surrounding the water kid. Sasuke jumped back, keeping him busy. I'm gonna roast him. A N you dumb dumb stupid ass bitch sharp tooth looking ass. Sasuke said, rapidly doing hand seals. Haku nodded and merged with one of the mirrors, and started to rapidly move from one to another, throwing her some bonds. Haku, jump out. Sasuke yelled out, plasma style, Nova bomb. Sasuke shouted, throwing a small ball of extremely hot flames into the dome, as Haku quickly jumped out. A bright flash filled the bridge, destroying the mirrors. The duo were panting from exhaustion. Did that get him? Haku asked, still panting. A low chuckling came from the crater, which Tazuna was crying over. The low chuckle grew into full-blown laughter. Not quite. Suigetsu shouted, his arm and half of his face missing, a small amount of water bordering it. Water quickly formed up from the side of the bridge and repaired his body. He was panting. How are you not dead? Sasuke shouted, causing Suigetsu to laugh again. Used my arm to create a water prison around me. Still managed to get my face though, that was a strong ass jutsu. Suigetsu laughed. Sasuke frowned. That jutsu almost took everything out of him. Then, he heard someone screaming. Hanada. With Kakashi. Damn, this guy is elusive. Kakashi growled, as Shade, for the umpteenth time, tried to nail him with tendrils of shadow. But, every time he was sure he had a perfect shot, the man just vanished into his shadow. It was starting to grind on his nerves. You know Kakashi, I'm only here for the fight. How disappointing. Shade's voice reverberated around him like a ghost, Kakashi glared in annoyance. Would. You. Hold. Still. He ground out, throwing another kanai at his form, only for him to vanish again. He fell back into his shadow, leaving a trace of a blackness that seemingly absorbed all light, that's when Kakashi had an idea. Quickly forming some hand seals, a loud chirping noise filled the air around him as his hand was filled with lightning, before it continued up his arm. Reikiri, he shouted, as he dashed forward once again at Shade, who looked surprised, before he grinned slightly. Right as Kakashi was about to hit him, Shade stepped to the side, spun behind him, and grabbed Kakashi's back. Immediately, the Reikiri fizzled out. Shade leaned over to Kakashi's ear. That was fun, he said, a sadistic grin on his lips as he blasted. Kakashi with all of the killer intent he could muster. Kakashi froze for a second, sweat forming on his neck, before he spun to hit Shade, only to see all that was left of him was a wisp of a shadow. May we meet again, his ghostly voice carried over the bridge, before he vanished. Kakashi cursed. Then he froze as an anguished cry roared through the mist. Hanada. With Zabuza. A loud clang could be heard, as the two swordsmen of the mist clashed, both with a bloodthirsty grin on their faces. Getting a bit rusty, eh Zabuza? Kisame said a feral grin on his face. Zabuza grinned as well. I could say the same for you, fish for brains, he mocked, earning a glare from Kisame. The small exchange was interrupted as they jumped apart quickly. Zabuza, seeing Kisame start doing hand seals, began his own. A giant water dragon clashed with a giant water wall, splashing both the men, who grunted in excretion, one trying to overpower the other. After a moment, the jutsus were released, and they clashed once again with their swords. Diarisis we might be tied. Zabuza gasped, his chakra already low from blocking that monstrous water dragon. Kisame grinned. Diarisis getting tired. Well, looks like he'll be winning this fight then, Diarisis Kisame said, not showing any signs of exhaustion. Diarisis damn you and your massive chakra supply, Diarisis Zabuza growled out, baring his teeth at Kisame. The fish man laughed. Diarisis well, of course. Fish men will always be superior. Kisame boasted. Zabuza grinned. Let's see about that, he laughed. However, just as they were about to engage each other, they heard a pained scream. Hanada. With Hanada, Hanada glared at her opponent, who just looked at her, a seemingly bored. She couldn't stand the fact that he seemed like he wasn't taking her seriously. Angered, she quickly rushed forwarded, thrusting an anger-infused hockey strike. He smirked, and didn't move. Take me seriously, Hanada shouted, her hand impacting him, sending him flying. She glared. Kira frowned, shocked that she hit him. How did you do it? How did you hit me? He asked, his once bored eyes glaring fiercely into hers. I'm assuming you are a Logia, correct? 
Guess what? Doesn't matter. I expect you put some effort into this now. Hanada glared, checking herself with a diagnosis jutsu. Poison. Quickly, she channeled some healing chakra into the weak poison, neutralizing it. Hmm. You are interesting. I will fight you seriously. I hope you are prepared, Kira said, glaring. Hanada smirked, before once again rushing into the fight, her palm black with hockey. Striking towards the venom man, who quickly dodged, and launched a blob of poison at her. She struck the blob, sending venom splashing all around her. She smirked once again, the once shy girl now a warrior on the battlefield. Hmm, looks like normal blobs won't work, Kira said, before he waved his hand at Hanada, a large tsunami of poison flowing at her. Frowning, she knew she couldn't dodge. Damn, it's times like these where she wished she mastered the heavenly rotation. Poison washing over her, she quickly tried to purge it from her body using medical chakra. It worked, mostly, she knew there still was a lot of poison in her system. She had to finish this fast. Quickly, she rushed her opponent once again, managing a strike on his shoulder, causing it to go limp. This was quickly followed by another, and another. Now, both his arms were useless and he coughed up a bit of blood, as she hit a lung. What the hell? What did you do you bitch? Kira said, jumping away. Hanada smiled grimly. I spelled out your doom, she said, before she rushed him again. With the dead weight of his arms slowing him down, he couldn't. Dodge the strike that hit his heart, stopping it. He died rather quickly, his pale eyes glaring accusingly at the poor girl. She walked away, not able to stand the look on the man she killed, before she fell over, coughing up a bit of blood, her pale face sweating dangerously. Damn, I forgot about the poison he got in with his strikes. I'm sorry, Naruto-kun, she thought, her eyes slowly closing. She faintly heard someone screaming her name. Then, she passed out. Childhood memories as Naruto stared at the unconscious form of his beloved Hinata, he could feel a very dark emotion burning inside him. Anger. Loss. Hatred. But, most of all, he felt anguish. A red chakra burst from his body, as he unconsciously brought upon Kurama's chakra, his powerful emotions influencing him. Hanada. He screamed, the dark energy reaching new heights, cracking the ground underneath him. He looked over at Kisame and Zabuza. You. You did this. He yelled, before vanishing, and reappearing next to the fish man, striking at him. Suddenly, a giant wall of ice spikes appeared along the trail Naruto left, before they shattered and reformed into millions of frozen blades, shooting at Kisame, who was launched by Naruto's earlier strike. Shit, Kisame said, blocking them with his sword, forcing himself to land, skidding a bit. He had a couple of cuts on his body. Naruto's crimson eyes glared seemingly piercing the soul of the man who was responsible for the death of his love. He roared, the sheer power behind it cracking the bridge below him and causing Kisame to stab his sword into the ground. Bastard! Naruto screamed, dashing to attack him again. A sword puffed into his hand. It was Mo Fubuki. Quickly drawing the sword from its sheath, he slashed at Kisame, who hastily tried to block. To his shock, ice started to cover his sword, not stopping whatsoever. Quickly jumping back, he tried to break the ice off his precious sword. Not paying attention for a second was all it took for Naruto to dash forward once again, his blade poised for Kisami's heart. However, before he reached him, he was blocked by a shadowed figure, who grabbed him and threw him back. The figure reappeared in front of the boy. All Naruto saw before he passed into unconsciousness was a strangely shaped Sharingan. The figure turned around, revealing a swirled orange mask. He was also wearing the same cloak at Kisame. Hello. I'm Tobi, Kisame's senpai, leader Sama wants you to disengage. I already to water boy, so let's go, he said childishly, before they both vanished in a swirl. This shocked Kakashi. A space-time ninjutsu? Oh shit, this is bad, and it's a teleportation one, Kakashi said, though internally he was conflicted. It was extremely similar to his own Mangekyu Sharingan technique. Kamui. Sasuke and Haku quickly rushed to Naruto and Hinata. Haku quickly did a check up on them. Hanada is poisoned, though luckily she purged enough for it to be non-lethal. She will be out for a day or two. Naruto on the other hand, is perfectly fine. There is no sign of battle on him. He doesn't even have low chakra. Oh, he seems to be in a genjutsu, Haku said, before she sent a small pulse of chakra through Naruto. Quickly after, he awoke, confused. Where am I? He asked, looking around. He quickly gathered his bearings. 
Hinata Chan, is she okay? He asked in concern. Haku smiled and nodded, earning a sigh of relief from the boy. Damn, what was that earlier? Sasuke asked, slightly impressed from the sudden burst of power, was that Karama? Yeah, she is very powerful, I need to apologize to her, I took her chakra without asking, Naruto said sheepishly. Sasuke nodded in understanding, Naruto frowned after a moment of thinking. What is it? Sasuke asked, Naruto's frown deepened. Sasuke, does the Uchiha have any new canon? Like, any in recent years? Naruto asked. Sasuke frowned and shook his head. No, we haven't had any new canon in the past 60 years, why? The man in the mask had a Sharingan. A Mangekyu Sharingan, Naruto said. Kakashi stiffened and walked over to Naruto. Can you tell me what it looked like? He asked cautiously. Naruto blinked, and nodded. I will try, I guess it had a shuriken-like pattern, but it extended to create a circle at the ends, Naruto struggled to describe it. Kakashi froze, uncovered his Sharingan, and transformed it into the Mangekyu, shocking both of the boys. Did it look like this? He asked worriedly. Naruto's mouth was agape, and he merely nodded. Kakashi cursed. Sensei, how do you have the same Sharingan as him? Was he the Uchiha that gave it to you? Sasuke asked, confused. Kakashi frowned. The man who gave me my Sharingan was named Obito Uchiha, but this is impossible. He died in the Third Shinobi War, I saw it. Half his body was crushed under a rock. He didn't even have a Mangekyu, he said. Naruto frowned once again. Isn't it procedure to extract a body once a hot zone is cooled? They should have his body, Naruto said, thinking of the standard. Shinobi drills. Kakashi froze, and slowly nodded. That's right, Okami. Obito is alive, but how did he get his Mangekyu? It's only accessible through seeing a loved one die, and as far as I know, there wasn't anyone he specifically cared about other than me and Rin. He must have saw Rin die. Kakashi's eye widened. A small chuckle came from behind him. How right you are Kakashi, the voice spat his name with contempt, you promised me you would keep her safe. Imagine my surprise when I find that you were the one to ran a rakiri through her chest. Kakashi's face widened, and he turned around, only to see a Mangekyu Sharingan staring back at him. His eyes widened at the sight of his, dead, best friend. Obito, I, I didn't kill her, Kakashi said. Obito froze. Was that true? No, he wouldn't lie to me, would he? Obito frowned, but the seeds of doubt have been planted. I don't know if you saw it, but right before I was about to shove my Reikiri into her, Sensei appeared in a flash, unsealed the Rokubi safely, and resealed it inside a small boy. I believe his name was. Yutakata, Kakashi said, frowning. Everyone looked at Kakashi in shock. They never have heard anything of his past, so this was surprising. Kakashi, I'm sorry. I have been played. I knew I shouldn't have trusted Madara. I will tell you everything. The Akatsuki, what happened when I, died, and even about the moon plan. Obito was abruptly cut off by a black form appearing around his body. I'm afraid you're not doing anything, the figure said, wrapped around Obito. Black, Zetsu, Obito choked out. Inside, he was in turmoil. He knew that Zetsu was going to kill him to keep him silent. Suddenly, he felt someone appear next to him in a shocking speed. Then, he felt cold. Extremely cold. Ice time, a powerful voice spoke before he was completely frozen solid, Black Zetsu included. Naruto. What the hell? Kakashi screamed. Naruto turned and glared at Kakashi, a small blue aura enveloping him. Calm. My name is Aokiji Kuzan. I am using the last of my strength that resides in this devil fruit to save you a lot of trouble. Black Zetsu is actually a devil. One that doesn't live in a devil fruit anymore. His powers were from the dark dark fruit. A terrible man once controlled that fruit. Luckily, he was killed my monkey D. Luffy, previous pirate king. Then, he must have went. And joined with the chakra fruit of the god tree, which Kagaya ate, giving birth to all chakra. However, when his inhabited fruit was consumed, instead of merging with the girl's body, he released himself as a guardian for her. He slowly corrupted her mind. She went crazy. Luckily, her two sons were able to seal her away. One of these two sons were named Hagoromo Otsutsuki or as you know him, the Sage of Six Paths. However, Black Zetsu escaped. His goal is to revive his puppet, and destroy the world. I am giving this boy all my knowledge on this devil fruit. Now, 
Do not let my warning be in vain. The voice that was definitely wasn't Naruto spoke, much power flowing into it. Suddenly, the aura disappeared, and Naruto collapsed to the ground. Naruto. Sasuke shouted, running over to the boy. He was quickly followed by Haku, who did another checkup on him. He's fine, just knocked out. Again. She said, sighing. Kakashi strolled over. Zabuza, Haku, Sasuke, I need you guys to pack up. Sasuke grabbed Naruto, Haku grabbed Hinata. We need to get Obito and this Zetsu thing to Konoha ASAP. Zabuza and I will carry. We leave tomorrow. Tell Tazuna we're sorry, Kakashi said, his eyes sharp and serious. Everyone nodded. Quickly, they grabbed everything they could. Soon, they left, sprinting at full speed, or as fast as they could with their respective passengers. Kakashi and Zabuza would occasionally swap holding Obito, as the ice was so cold it would start to give them frostbite. Within less than eight hours, they arrived at the gates of Konoha. Ignoring signing in, they rushed to the Hokage Tower. Hokage-sama, Kakashi said, out of breath. The Hokage immediately jumped to his feet at seeing Zabuza. Kakashi, you better have damn good reason you brought an A-rank missing nin in here. Especially since two of your genin are unconscious. The Hokage shouted, his KI being barely held back. Kakashi started sweating. This was the god of shinobi he was in front of, not the kind old man. They assisted us when we were ambushed by Akatsuki. I will explain everything. We need Naruto awake though. He shouted. Hiruzen nodded and quickly an Anbu medic appeared, tapped Naruto's head, waking him instantly. Huh, ugh, my head, Naruto moaned. He turned and saw the frozen form of Obito and yelped. What the hell? Aftermath. Okay what the hell, why is there a frozen person in front of me that I didn't freeze? Naruto exclaimed, extremely confused. He looked over at his team, who were still frozen in shock. Naruto, I don't even know where to begin. Kakashi started, only to be interrupted by Zabuza. What the hell was that? He yelled out, grabbing the boy and shaking him wildly. Haku immediately ran over and saved the boy from the mon's clutches. Zabuza-sama, watch what you're doing. She scolded him, earning a chastised look from the bandaged man. Kakashi smirked, causing Zabuza to glare at him slightly. Zabuza has a point Naruto. What exactly just happened? Kakashi asked, staring at his student intently. Naruto started to sweat slightly. I have no idea. One moment I saw Hinata collapse, the next there is a frozen dude in front of me. He explained. Naruto sighed. Kakashi looked over at the Hokage. So, Kakashi, since Naruto-kun here couldn't explain to us what happened, I would like it if you explained it to us. Kakashi nodded. He quickly recalled what happened. Hiruzen was shocked. This man in the ice is Obito. How? The Hokage said, lost for words. Kakashi nodded in understanding. I know how you feel. Not only that, but I believe Naruto will have a much higher understanding of his devil fruit now. Aokiji told us he gifted him all of his knowledge about his fruit. Kakashi said. Naruto nodded. A lot more technique names are flowing through my mind at the moment wait, what the hell is awakening? Naruto froze, not literally. He scrunched his face up in concentration. His face slowly broke into a grin. Oh, that's cool. Hehe. <laughs> Do I even want to know? Kakashi said, shaking his head slightly. Sasuke looked slightly curious. Hanada was still passed out, the medical Anbu checking her over. Hiruzen sighed. So what are we going to do with Obito? If he thaw him with this, black Zetsu, thing on him, he will die. Do we have a way of removing him from the ice without removing Zetsu? Hiruzen asked. Kakashi frowned. I may have an idea. I can use my Kamui to free only Obito, Hiruzen nodded. He gestured towards Kakashi to do it. The Jonin nodded, and uncovered his Sharingan, which mutated into a pinwheel. Focusing on the ice, Kakashi slowly but steadily sucked only Obito into the pocket dimension, leaving the black blob known as Zetsu alone in the ice. Kakashi quickly covered his eye and sat down, gasping. That, was exhaustingly difficult. I hope I never have to do that again, Kakashi sighed. Naruto stifled a laugh. Anyways, let's go test those techniques of yours Naruto, Sasuke said, smirking. Naruto grinned and nodded, both vanishing in their respective elemental shunshuns, leaving Kakashi to explain to the Hokage why there was an A-ranked missing nin in his office. Damn you Naruto. Training Field 7. Sasuke and Naruto arrived at their team's training ground. 
Naruto quickly turned to Sasuke, grinning. He wanted to try out one of the more powerful moves, Peasant Beak. He quickly formed ice on his and tried to form the bird. Nothing happened. He frowned, and focused a bit more. Slowly, a very small bird barely the size of a hummingbird formed on his hand. Naruto glared. Damn it, I have the knowledge on the techniques, but I can't do them yet. I don't have a strong enough mastery, Naruto said. Sasuke frowned. He was looking forward to testing out his plasma style against his ice. He would have been able to get past his defense now. Well, what do we have here? Hey, Ice Gaki, a slippery voice resounded throughout the training grounds. Naruto paled. Shit. Scary snake bitch, he gasped out. Suddenly, he felt someone hugging him from behind, a kanai on the inside of his thigh. Oh shit. Oh, shit. Ah, he remembers me. I remember you too Naruto-kun. My snakes have missed their playmate, Anko hissed into his ear. Naruto quickly substituted with Sasuke and sprinted away. She is your problem now duck butt. Naruto shouted. Sasuke glared. Damn it Naruto. Anko smirked at him. Ah, Naruto gave me a new toy. How kind of him. Sasuke paled. Oh shit. He quickly used a shunshun to get out of there, Anko giving chase. Meanwhile, Naruto was eating at Ichiraku's, telling Ayame about his mission. After a while, Sasuke shuffled in, scratches and bite marks covering all his visible skin. Naruto, I am going to kill you one of these days. I promise, Sasuke ground out, before plopping next to the blonde and ordering a seafood ramen. Naruto paled slightly. Um, how bad was she this time? He asked, kind of afraid of the answer. Sasuke groaned. Five snakes, over fifty kanai, and I believe there was even about ten explosive tags this time. Sasuke winced, Naruto joining him. I'm sorry, but remember, it was your turn to be the distraction. I will do it next time. That's what you said last time. And the time before. I am not being bait again. Sasuke glared, activating his Sharingan. Suddenly, a swirl of leaves appeared besides them, revealing Itachi. Itachi gave a small smile at Ayame, who blushed, before turning to his little brother. So, what is this I heard about you guys doing an S-ranked mission? Itachi asked kindly, activating his Sharingan. Sasuke. Gulped. A N keep in mind. This time there was an S rank missing nin, two A ranks, and three B rank ninja. Well, uh, you see, um, Naruto helped me out here. Sasuke said pathetically. Naruto paled and shook his head. No way. A pissed off Itachi knee is the last thing I want to deal with. I swear, he is even scarier than Anko chan sometimes. Naruto said frantically, Itachi smirking amusedly in the background. You, oh, me. Sasuke ground out, referring to the incident that just happened. Naruto sighed. Fine, Itachi ni, the S rank went off without a hitch, we secured two more ninja for the village, one of them has a bloodline and the other was one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. Combined the fact that none of us were crippled permanently, I believe we had a fairly nice first S rank. Oh, we also got Obito Uchiha back, Naruto said, facing the raven-haired team. Itachi froze for a moment. You mean, that Obito? He is our cousin. Like, direct cousin. Itachi said. Sasuke spit out his ramen. What? That creepy pale guy is our cousin. He exclaimed. Itachi's eyes were filled with mirth as he glanced at Sasuke, a noodle hanging from his mouth. He nodded. Sasuke sighed and looked down. He never even heard of Obito before, he was curious as to why. He looked over at his older brother, who had ordered a thing of Paki. He was also flirting with Ayame which got a tick mark from Naruto. He sighed. So, Ayame-chan, would you like to go get something to eat later? Itachi asked, causing the waitress to blush heavily and nod slowly. Naruto got up and walked over to Itachi and whispered in his ear. You heard Ayame Nichan, I will release the whole wrath of 10,000 blizzards and a pist of Kyubi. Understood. He added chakra to his voice at the end, making his voice slightly demonic. Itachi paled slightly and nodded. Usually he wouldn't take the threat seriously as it was from Naruto, but he knew he was serious this time. Yes sir, I will treat her with the utmost respect and caring. He said, standing at a salute. Naruto nodded and sat back down to resume eating his ramen. Sasuke smirked. Already acting like Hokage, huh Naruto? He said. Naruto smirked back at Sasuke. Of course, I am going to be one someday. He laughed. 
Sasuke laughed with him. Elsewhere. Report. A powerful voice spoke out to the darkness. Two small shadows appeared kneeling towards him. We were beaten back. The Kyubi Jinchuriki was more powerful than we initially thought. Though, I think it wasn't the Kyubi's power. It seems he has a devil fruit. The taller of the two spoke. The second picked up from it. Yes, it seems he has a logia. The ice ice fruit. If I remember correctly, the previous user was an admiral 20 years ago, before he was defeated and killed by another. Akainu. Magma magma fruit. I guess it reformed here. By the way, it seems that a notorious pirate will be landing at the elemental islands soon. He is very powerful, as powerful as you, leader Sama, monkey D. Luffy, the shorter. Shadow said. The taller of the two growled. Son of a bitch defeated my younger brother, Arlong. Calm yourself Kisame. I will handle Straw Hat. I should be more than enough to handle him. You two will continue to pursue the Jinchuriki. Leave me. The voice spoke. Kisame and the other. Shadow vanished, leaving the leader to his thoughts. He looked up, his powerful rippled eyes being shadowed by red hair. Shanks, I will eventually amass enough power to kill you. But I might as well kill your little protege first, he whispered, chuckling evilly. The world would know the strength of the Akatsuki. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.